The summer landscape and big sky over Saskatchewan. Today, from the Queen City of Regina, this is the CFL on CBC in HD. It was 40 years ago when Eagle Keys led his Saskatchewan squad into the Canadian Champion. Never done by a Regina team before. The Western Rough Riders win the 1966 Grey Cup game. Epic battles have been staged ever since, with no greater foe for the Riders than the Calgary Stampeders. Over the years, these two teams have competed in some of the most stunning Western showdowns of all time. Much has changed over 40 years as the Stamps and Riders line up to face each other once more. Saskatchewan legends return to Regina to watch these fierce rivals battle it out again. It's the Stampeders and Rough Riders in their 2006 quest to be the best in the West. Homecoming weekend at Mosaic Stadium. Today, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders play host to the Calgary Stampeders and celebrate the 40th anniversary of the 1966 Grey Cup champions. Big banners for the banner year 1966, and the legends are all here this weekend. There's Ron Lancaster, flanked by his big fullback, George Reed, Bluey Huey's here. They're all here this weekend. It's a homecoming of sorts as well for this man, Calgary quarterback Henry Burris, perhaps not as welcome as the rider legends Burris making his second return to Regina since leaving Calgary a year ago as a free agent. A festive reunion weekend nonetheless. Hi everybody, Mark Lee along with the big man Chris Walby. Well we've talked a lot about it during the pregame and the panel. The front page news in the Regina Leader Post that says an investigation is underway into Saskatchewan running back Kenton Keith after a local man was injured in an incident in a local nightclub a week ago Chris the black eye on the weekend, but how much of a distraction is it to the football team? Well, it's only a distraction to the football team if you allow it to be a distraction to the football team. I think the biggest thing that I'm very upset with, and that's the crap part of it, is the fact that it was announced today honoring the 66 Grey Cup team. But you know what? We don't know if he's guilty or not, so let's let it go. I mean, the thing is, for a player, when you're on that football field, and we've all been there as professional or personal problems, this is a place you forget about your problems for those 60 minutes, because all you're concerned about is helping your team win. Now, while Kenton Keith has struggled in his first first two games against BC this year. Joffrey Reynolds of the Stampeders has had a field day leading the CFL in yards per carry right now at 7.8. What a force he'll be on the ground today. Coordinator says, you know, in his 20 plus coaching years up here in Canada, has called him the most dynamic, exciting back he's ever coached. That's big praise. But the thing is, this guy just gets it done. The last year against Saskatchewan in two games, over 230 yards rushing. So he can get it done. And boy, this Saskatchewan defense will have their hands full with him today. And he spent the offseason pushing his suburban around to get stronger. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Your Rona game notes now. Well, let's take a look. And for Calgary, we're definitely going to talk about on offense. Killer instinct. This is an offense that's been in the red zone 10 times. They've come away with only two touchdowns. Got to get a little tougher on defense. Pressure in the zone. What I mean by that is the defense, they will play zone and try and pressure you with the up front three or four guys. They try to keep everything in front of them. On the other side of the ball for Saskatchewan offensively, don't sit like a stone. I'm talking about Kerry Joseph. Don't put him back there just as a drop back pass. To roll him out. Attack the perimeters of the defense and on defense. Reynolds wrap. We talked about Joffrey Reynolds. Big day for that defense. Holding to nothing. You got to chance to win this football game. A gusty day over Regina, 25 degrees, lovely temperature, but look at the wind gusting 
from the north at 39 kilometers per hour. And with that in mind, the Riders won the going coin toss and have deferred to get the wind in that second quarter. For Tom Higgins, well, looking for a more complete game from his team today. Their two wins decided in the waning moments this year. They need to finish their drives. Danny Barrett, his seventh season as head coach of the Riders, his 48 wins, second only to the legendary Eagle Keys, the coach of the 66 Grey Cup champions and also in attendance to mark that 40th anniversary here this afternoon. This big game in HD on the CBC as we get set to kick it off and they'll have to hold it because of the gusty conditions. Sandro DeAngelis, the hot place kicker, getting set to kick it off to this man. Jason Armstead flanked by Dominic Dorsey and it's Dorsey chasing the ball down, short kick to the 35, spinning at the 40, and he'll have a short return of the play. Mark Calise making the tackle, a 40-yard kickoff, a good 20 yards shy into that wind, and just a six-yard return as Kerry Joseph makes his way for his first offensive series of the football game, the eighth starting quarterback in the past seven years under Danny Barrett the Renegades dispersal draft and coming off that fourth quarter comeback in which he en engineered two touchdowns as Regina came back to beat BC two weeks ago. Had the week off, coming off the bye week in a double tight end formation. They go to work on the ground and it's Kent yeah, Keith and there's nowhere to go. Sidestepping at the line of scrimmage and George White makes the tackle for Calvary. Well, Las Vegas had about Kent Keith, but he's only carried the ball 12 times prior to that carry. Kerry Joseph, of course, he's the man that runs this offense. He's going to make everything go. Watch out for Chris Zarka out of the backfield. The receiving crew, Richardson, French inside. Got to have a big game from the White House, Dominguez and Armstead. And the offensive line, one of the best ones in the CFL, anchored by Jeremy O'Day at the center. Loss of one on the play, second and 11. Joseph in the pocket, yeah. throwing and overthrowing his intended receiver. Jamal Richardson was open, but the ball was high, and so Saskatchewan will punt. Well, this is a very characteristic of Kerry Joseph in the initial two games we've seen him play, and that is that he lets the ball go. He has happy feet. He bounces around that pocket, and I think he needs to learn that he's behind a pretty good offensive line here and get comfortable with his new receivers, and I think as time goes on, you'll see those passes be completed. Kenyon Rambo back to return this punt from the rookie, Luca Kanji. The Riders' second-round pick in the 2006 Canadian Draft and the special teams player of the week in Week 2. He hammers a line drive on the run. Rambo across the 30, looking for some blocks, and he's... Kitwana Jones, the second-year linebacker, full of vinegar there with a big special teams tackle to limit that return to just seven yards. And there's the welcome to Henry Burris <laughs> in his second game back here at Mosaic Stadium. He swept the season series against Saskatchewan last year. And the fans letting him know he's not welcome back. Back to pass, no, he'll hand off to Joffrey Reynolds, up the gut, and again, it's tough going as Scott Schultz, the nose tackle, makes the tackle a three-yard game. Nice job of a delayed draw to that man, Joffrey Reynolds. He's had big games against Saskatchewan in the past. The receiving crew, and it's a good one. Nick Lewis, 2004 Rookie of the Year, and Elijah Thurman over from the Rough Riders from last year. On an offensive line, John Comiskey getting a second start at that center position. Nearly as many yards as the league leader, Charles Roberts of Winnipeg, but not nearly as many touches. Back to pass on second and six, thrown deep downfield. It's complete. Elijah Thurman gets in behind the Saskatchewan secondary, and the former rider makes his first return to Mosaic Stadium with a huge touchdown. And Mark, remember, this is a throw into a pretty gusty, strong wind. And nice touch by Henry Burris. Good protection up front. Just rolls to his right, unloads it. And as you say, Elijah Thurman of the Rough Fighters of 2005. What a homecoming to come back. First time back here. First play of a thrown pass, and it's a touchdown. It's a 72-yard touchdown from Burris. To Thurman, the former battery mates from Saskatchewan, haunt their old team. And on the opening drive, 
the Calgary Stampeders take a 7-0 lead. The CFL on CBC, brought to you by General Motors of Canada and all its divisions. By Rogers Wireless, bringing you 2006 FIFA World Cup video highlights and the latest MP3 phones. And by Future Shop, Canada's number one destination for fixed screen TV. Calgary Stampeders with a two-play scoring drive capped by this man's pass to Elijah Thurman for 72 yards. It's a nice job of getting down. Boy, I tell you what, if you want to make a statement, we talked about when we introduced Henry Burst, the crowd's reaction. The Boo Birds are out in full force. That's the way to quiet the crowd. The Angelus kicking it into the wind again, short. And it's Dorsey across the 30, and he's closed line and goes no further as Wes Cates, the rookie, go, running back in special teams phenom, right makes the tackle, right. an 11-yard return. Well, when you take a look at this play, you're going to have four guys rushing. There's a four-man. Now you're going to have the linebackers are just going to drop. It's a zone coverage. We run the play right now. Four-man pressure gets picked up, but it's man on the outside. One-on-one -on -one coverage, Armando Curry, and he just mistimes his jump. Can't tip the football. Elijah Thurman gets that. 72 yards later, it's a touchdown. It's his longest touchdown reception ever. And back to work comes Kerry Joseph for Saskatchewan. A hit to Armstead. Jason Armstead across the 40-yard line, and Brian Clark wraps him up quickly to limit that gain to five yards. Well, Calgary runs a 3-4 defense, probably the only team in the CFL that employs three down linemen and four linebackers. Going to put a lot of pressure, try and get a lot of pressure on that man, Kerry Joseph. Saskatchewan getting into its no-huddle offense here to try to spark their offensive attack. Kerry Joseph has been prolific in Ottawa in no-huddle situations. Here we go, short drop across the middle. The pass is low and incomplete, intended for Richardson. Well, he had the right receiver. He just could not get the ball up. We take a look at the defensive line of the Stampeders. Demetrius Maxey leading that group with two sacks. Talk all about the linebacking crew. It's a good one. Last year's outstanding defense player, John Grace, and the man that really leads or makes that linebacking crew, Brian Clark and Trey Young, a headhunter playing that safety position. A couple of rookies to the field and J.R. Ruffin and Cedric Williams in that Calgary secondary. But perhaps the rider's showing a little rust. There's a bad snap, and Kanji just gets it away. A low punt. On the move, it's Rambo. Rambo trying to get outside, and he does. And forced out of bounds at his own bench. Kenyon Rambo taking the long route to the wide side. A 17-yard return on that 37-yard punt by Kanji. And a bad snap by Jocelyn Frenette. Nice close-up of the snap by Frenette. Low snap, Kanji. Really takes a long time. Very fortunate that the Stampeders did not have a block on. And you have to wonder, Chris, if Saskatchewan's showing some rust after a bye week just two weeks into the season. Fans booing Burris as he goes to work again. They'll hand it off to Joffrey Reynolds out of the shotgun, and look at Reynolds power his way through the interior of that Saskatchewan defense. A gain of about six, maybe seven on the play. Well, he's going right at the heart of that defense because the two guys in the middle, Scott Schultz and Nate Davis, are the guys that have to stop that running play by Joffrey Reynolds. The linebacking crew, Reggie Hunt, the man they call the Grim Reaper at that outside linebacker position. And Jackie Mitchell getting a start today at the free safety position. This is Saskatchewan defense ranked number two against the run, allowing an average of only 42 yards a game. To the air now, Burris. It's complete to Rambo, and he's out of bounds. Well ahead of that first down marker. Man, I think we got to talk about Mark. That's, like, that's a kind of a misleading stat when you say only 42 yards because they're playing against BC, who likes to throw the ball pretty practically every play. Take a look at TJ Stansel. Falling off his coverage, making the play on Kenyon Rambo. Stansel wearing number seven this year, giving 13 to the organization as they celebrate the 13th man in the stands every week and give that number to a faithful fan. A bunch formation now for the Stampeders. Back to pass is Burris. He's got time across the 
the middle. It's complete to Copeland, and Jermaine Copeland will hustle his way to another first down. Well, the Stampeder offense which has been terrific between the 20s, continues to be prolific through the air. Well, they have done a really nice job of mixing it up. They ran the bunch formation to the right side, but again, this is way too much time, and they're going to sit back in a zone, and he's just going to come across the middle from the outside, find a hole. Ball is perfectly delivered. Copeland comes up with another catch, the 6'2", 202-pound receiver. Three consecutive seasons, over 1,000 yards receiving. Calgary threatening again on offense. Back to pass. It's Burris throwing a screen out of the backfield to Joffrey Reynolds. Reynolds breaking a tackle and diving to the 20-yard line for a gain of seven. So good first down production on the screen pass. Well, and, and a good job again of also mixing up the play. As we've seen screen, we've seen a couple of delayed draws, seen a couple of quick hitch passes. Just going to leak him out of the backfield, give him the ball, and as you say, picks up seven yards on that first down. And on this drive, after scoring on a two-play drive to begin the game, Calgary eating the clock into the wind. And Burris throwing effectively into the teeth of that 40-kilometer-an-hour gust. Pitch out, wide side, Joffrey Reynolds looking for a gap. And there's not much there. And it looks like he'll be shy of the first down as they mark it at about the 19, a gain of two. Well, they're going to try and run behind the bunch formation. We talked about that, where you'll have three receivers line up outside the tackle. And that's going to give three additional blockers to try to seal everything inside. Reynolds tries to get outside, but great pursuit by the Saskatchewan defense to get over there. Fred Perry from his defensive end position to bring down Joffrey Reynolds short of the first down. Sandro DeAngelis in to attempt an early field goal as Tom Higgins decides not to go for it on third and about a yard and a half on the play. DeAngelis, of course, has only missed once this year, and that's outside the 41-yard line. This attempt will come from the 26 and a half, make it 27. The Angeles has the kick into the wind, and it's good right through the uprights. So last week's special team player in the league opens with a good field goal. Welcome back to the CFL on CBC tonight in HD, and a special welcome to our viewers around the world, our armed forces in places like Afghanistan, and our American viewers tonight watching from New Jersey, Connecticut, Philadelphia, San Francisco, Sacramento, Atlanta, virtually 70 million households now tuning in to Canadian football in the United States. Another short kick into the wind. Zarka has it left by Dor Dorsey and Zarka bulldozing his way up the middle of the field. And he'll cross the midfield stripe, brought down at the 50. A 36-yard kickoff, a 20-yard return by the big man who's been nursing some sore ribs. Well, sore ribs, but he may provide the spark for this offense, who in the first two series have gone two and out. Nice job of cutting it back into the field, then lowering the shoulder, running over some of his own blockers, picking up positive yardage. Conversely, the Stampeders engineering 10 points into the win. Joseph with that double tight end formation. Two big men outside of the tackles. Two receivers wide side. That's the way he rolls. Joseph can run. Threatening the line of scrimmage. He gets the ball away to Armstead. And they'll talk about it on the sidelines. Will they rule it a catch? Joseph looking in. There's still no ruling as to whether the ball was complete or incomplete out of bounds just past the first down marker. Well, the head linesman, Al Bradbury, number 72, he called it out of bounds initially. Then he conferred with the field judge, and they did come together and ruled that this was... He did not come in, and you can see his foot's on the, on the sideline. He is definitely out of bounds. Good call by the officials. He's going to go up and as he comes down. Yep. The right foot, there's no challenge. Unlike last week when Ed Herbie got his toe in bounds before his heel came down, it looked like Armstead was flat-footed as he hit the white paint with the catch. So it'll be second and ten. This Ryder offense struggling here early with the wind against Randy Chevrier in this Calgary defense. In the shotgun now, three receivers wide side. Joseph in the pocket, across the middle, 
And it's a big completion and a first down. Matt Dominguez, the big target, making the catch and moving the yardsticks. And Calgary likes to play the zone. They'll drop their linebackers. Look at that. That's just heads up play by Dominguez. He finds a spot behind the linebackers and in front of the secondary. And Kerry Joseph threads the football to him. Nice play to pick up a first down. Dominguez, of course, tearing his ACL in week two last year at Hamilton and missing the whole season. There's a hitch pass. Jason Armstead with lots of daylight. Turns on the speed, runs into his own man. And is dropped very close to the first down marker. J.R. Ruffin fending off the block and helping to make the tackle. Well, that's a hitch pass. They put the ball. They want to get Jason Armstead more involved in this offense. I'm surprised that he goes to the outside. I thought he would have took it more to the middle of the football field. It seemed to us there was an opening, but he took it over by where Jason French was trying to get a block on him. As you say, J.R. Ruffin brings him down. Then he ran smack into the back of Corey Grant, who was also trying to form a block. And they'll measure this awfully close to the first down, but the Riders now showing some life through the air after struggling two two and out series. But you see the, what happens when Kerry Joseph starts moving around in that pocket. He creates problems for the defense and buys himself some additional time to look downfield. Danny Barrett saying that his football team is still developing its identity on offense. Kerry Joseph and Armstead, two of the newcomers from the Ottawa Renegades. And Matt Dominguez, of course, back in the lineup after missing 16 games last year. Second and inches, double tight, quarterback sneak, and Kerry Joseph, who leads this football team in rushing, has the first down, no problem. Out of the sidelines now, and here's Kahari Jones. Kahari? Thanks, guys. I'm here on the sideline on uh, Saskatchewan Rough Rider sidelines, and Danny Barrett, at the start of the game, he was really stressing tempo. He wants this team to be moving fast, be doing everything fast. I think Kerry Joseph is at his best when he's moving fast, but also he needs to either run or roll out. I thought the best play that they ran was the rollout because that got his feet moving, and once his feet are moving, usually his balls are better. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Kahari. There's Jason Armstead in trouble on the hitch pass as Brian Clark got there first to stop him, and then he was surrounded. It'll be a loss of one on the play. And you know, when Joseph rolls, he threatens the line of scrimmage and defenses have to honor his tremendous rushing ability. Well, what it does is it, you know, Calgary's linebackers like to do a deep zone drop. But because of his ability to get to the outside, the linebackers can't drop as deep because they may have to come up and force Kerry Joseph out of bounds or make a tackle on him. This is just a hitch pass to Armstead, the opposite way. They had success to the right this time to go to the left. But this time, Calgary answers the challenge. Second and 11 after the loss of one. Joseph facing a four-man rush. Has time in the pocket. Throwing to the end zone, and he overthrows Jason French. And the win, perhaps, keeping that ball aloft as French was open in the end zone. Well, he tried to go deep right underneath the post. Jason French, and it did indeed look like the ball took off on Kerry Joseph. He thought he had the right touch on that football, but there is a strong win, and it seemed to just get underneath that football and lift it over the receiver's hands. Luca Kanji, who has missed just once outside the 41 himself, will attempt his first field goal from the 29 at the left hash marks. And the kick is up and good. So the Rough Riders finally get on the board with their first decent offensive series of this first year. 12 and 1, the home teams so far to start this early season. And Calgary, the way they started here, threatening to be the second team to win on the road. Curtis faking the handoff, rolling now. He's covered and forced out of bounds. Terrell Geridiak did not buy the fake. Second time that Henry Burris has returned here to Mosaic Stadium, and he says his friends are now his enemies. I love it when I come back here because to me it's uh, the number one atmosphere to play in in the league because the fans here just love the team so much and it's it's a game day it's a game day crowd they come with their boots laced up and and all their sirens and everything because they want to heckle that quarterback on the opposing team and, and I so happen to be that guy. I, I think Henry has a career in politics. 
after football. Here comes the blitz. The ball is away, and it's complete across the middle. And a great fight for it as Nick Lewis hangs on in traffic, and they'll move the yardsticks once again. Eddie Davis finally making the tackle. Well, Nick Lewis, who's working against David Bush, just does a nice job of just slanting into the middle. It's a quick throw. He's got good coverage, but the strength of Nick Lewis watches him continue to fight for yards. He picks up that first down. Take a look at the comparison of the super slots here for Calgary, Copeland, and Lewis. Taking their turns being the explosive receivers in this Calgary passing attack. First and ten. Saskatchewan blitzing. There's the screen to the near side. Elijah Thurman battling his way upfield. And Stansa will make the tackle. Game will be about five and a half. Burris so far is perfect through the air. Six for six into the wind to start this football game. And it had back-to-back -back scores in their first two offensive drives. Well, they're trying to run the hitch of the thing. And backside, I really like the fact that Joffrey Reynolds, who wasn't carrying the ball, picked up the blitz. Saskatchewan trying to put a little pressure on him. Reynolds negating that pressure. Shotgun formation. Bunch to the short field. Here comes the blitz again. Burris in trouble, throwing off his back foot. Thurman going up for it and can't get it. Eddie Davis helping to break it up on the play in a ball that hung up in the wind. Uh, good pressure from McCullough and Terrell Jereniak. The end and middle linebacker respectively bringing some pressure. There's the pressure coming up the middle on the outside. They got two on him. He asked, as you say, throw off the back foot. I found it interesting to listen to Nate Davis. He said, you know what? Play our game. I guarantee that Henry Burris will give us a couple of those throws that we can pick off. Danny Barrett was asked yesterday what advice he gave his secondary. He said, get ready to catch the ball because Henry will throw it to you a couple of times in this game. There's a fake snap to the up back. And Brian Clark scrambles upfield for a first down. Well, the Stampeders pull one out of their bag of tricks and fool Saskatchewan on special teams. Well, that's a great call because where you are in the field, even if it's not working, it's just right there, it's direct snap, and look at him. Originally going to take it inside. He's got a, a running back mentality. He looks around, sees the hole to the outside, changes direction, and picks up first down. But the unsung leader in blue of that defense gets a big play on special teams, and it's first down. Calgary at the Saskatchewan 40-yard line. Here's a bubble screen. Tates, the backup running back, hustles close to a first down, but there is a flag on the play. Well, a little bit of a screen pass. I like this option. They get three receivers out there to bring one back and all kind of blocking in front of them. We'll have to see what this flag is. It's not really conferring with either captain on the team. Usually you can get an indication if he's talking to Saskatchewan's captain or Calgary's. They may just pick this flag up. There's no infraction on the play. Pass was completed behind the line of scrimmage. Check it out. Well, I don't understand that because you can throw the ball behind the line of scrimmage anyway. So that's uh, I, I'm with you, Danny. I'm not sure what that was about. But... It'll be a nine-yard gain, second and one, after the Westgate's catch. Maybe the inquiry is whether the ball skipped. It can skip behind the line of scrimmage. Well, but the ball was in the air. It wasn't even close to being skipped, so I don't so think that was strange. Ball. Strange call, but at least they got it right. They were conferred and decided that it wasn't a flag at all. Okay. So Burris will get the necessary yardage. And TJ Stansel, the linebacker from Boston College, is down. I have got friend out to attend the injured Rough Rider linebacker. We'll take a timeout as they attend to the Saskatchewan defender. Imagine me and you, I do. I think about you day and night. It's only right. The only one for me is you and you for me. So happy together.
delicious cookie and caramel. Twix, one great bar after another. So I want... Back at Mosaic Stadium, Stansill makes his way off the field. Calgary threatening again. First down at the Saskatchewan 30. The eighth play of this drive again. Monopolizing the clock into the wind. Joffrey Reynolds off the left tackle. Bulldozing his way and then gang tackled. Mike McCullough, the middle linebacker, first to make contact. Now getting word that that flag that wasn't a flag, the officials were going to call an illegal block downfield, but because the pass was behind the line of scrimmage, they picked up the flag. Well, again, it's a, a situation, Mark, that I do like the fact they got together, conferred, and made the right decision. Little handoff, deep handoff. Joffrey Reynolds met by a swarm of Rough Rider defenders. Second and six, Calgary. Saskatchewan showing blitz, and here they come. Pressure, Burris gets it away. It's complete to Nick Lewis at full speed and a crossing pattern. He hurdles into the end zone. Touchdown, Stan Peters, a 25-yard acrobatic pass and run to Nick Lewis. <laughs> And the air has just gone out of this stadium. But you have to. Boy, I tell you what, you got to be so impressed because they're bringing everybody. Watch the pressure. Both linebackers are coming in. There's nobody in the middle. But Nick Lewis recognizes this. He does a drag pattern across where the linebackers would normally be, picks it up, and as you say, what an acrobatic move to hop over a defender and tumble into the end zone. The Angelus with the point after. And the third straight scoring drive after a fake punt. And the Stampeders, as the gun sounds to end the first quarter, have a 14-point lead, dominating the offensive clock into the wind here in Saskatchewan. Nick Lewis savoring his second touchdown of the season, a 25-yard pass and run play from Henry Burris. And it's 17-3 to start the second quarter of this football game. Jason Armstead awaiting the kickoff. And now the Riders will be playing into the wind on offense. That score by Calgary, three quick plays after the fake punt on third down. DeAngelis now with the ring, hammering the ball deep. Dorsey at his own goal line now. Dominic Dorsey heading between the hash marks. And he's tackled as he crosses the 20-yard line. Take one more look at that TD pass. Well, they're going to bring their blitz, and here's Reggie Hunt, there's Mike McCullough. Now take a look as we run this play, fellas. You're going to be running a little bit of a pick pattern. Now watch this. I'm going to tell you where to freeze it. Freeze it right there, fellas. Take a look at the pick play right there. And look who's wide open coming across the middle. That's Nick Lewis. He's going to come underneath on the drag pattern. Wide open. And as you say, then he gets down to that five-yard line, and Herschel Walker-like hurdles the defender into the end zone. Yes, Nick Lewis high-stepping his way to the end zone. And every time this Saskatchewan defense has gone to man coverage, they've been burned here early. On the ground, Ken Keith reverses his field. Now there was nowhere to go. And he's hit quickly. Trey Young comes up to fill from the safety position. And the gain on first down will be three yards. Well, I mean, if you look at the time of possession, it doesn't look that bad. And first down is obviously a good indicator, but, I mean, it's just been the explosiveness of the Calgary offense in the first quarter going into the wind. And, of course, as you mentioned, Mark, the fake third down punt where Brian Clark picked up a first down that led to the last touchdown by Nick Lewis. Boy, look at the dejection on the faces of that Saskatchewan defense. In the first quarter by Calvin. Joseph now throwing into the wind. It's complete to Matt Dominguez on a little curl route, but they'll spot it in the 35, and it will be a Saskatchewan first down. I'll take you back one year ago, almost to the day. It was the second week of the season as Dominguez made this catch and was headed to the end zone in Hamilton and then hit from behind. Jason Goss on his back, and it blew his knee up. 
the ACL torn. He was headed for surgery. His season was over, and he says he's fully recovered, but his coaches think he still doesn't have the full burst that he had before he got hurt. But good to have a big leader in Dominguez back. Flag on the play. Joseph with time downfield. Wide open. Corey Hathaway, the former renegade, makes a big catch. So the two old renegades team up. But a flag back in behind the line of scrimmage. Well, I think this is going to be going against Saskatchewan. I believe they're offside, but then again, I may be wrong. Now it's going against Calgary. Outside. Calgary 92. Penalty decline. First well, down. You know, that's interesting that the line judge on the far sideline went throw that flag and the pass stick is inside the interior of that defensive line. So when he threw that, the flag is thrown over here. Now, the interesting thing is when that usually happens, it usually indicates that one of the receivers has jumped early. For him to make that guys. call all the way over there, pretty interesting. Hathaway with a 37-yard gain. He lined up as the tight end, and nobody covered him. Keith come on, cutting up come on, field. Make that block. Make and the Saskatchewan rushing game, you saw the stats after the first quarter, negative one yard, continues to have trouble against this Calgary defense. Well, this is a team that really basically the, the whole uh, characteristic has been that they are running power this year they have the least rushing attempts of any CFL team through the first two weeks I think it with only two exhibition games and two games they still haven't got on track where they want to go with this game so the game is only one second and nine for Saskatchewan Joseph facing a five-man rush. Lots of time again. The ball is away and complete to Jamal Richardson. He heads up field. Trey Young throws him out of bounds. Another big first down as Kerry Joseph is throwing darts into the wind. And, and you see he's starting to settle down in the pocket. He's doing a little bit of rolling, but he's starting to get comfortable with the protection he's getting because Calgary's bringing a blitz, but they're picking it up up front. Nice job of Jamal Richardson to push into the receiver, Chapman, and come back to that football. Richardson, the leading receiver coming into this game with 147 yards and two touchdowns in the two games against BC, heading the aerial attack for Saskatchewan. Two fakes, back to pass, Joseph on the screen. It's complete to Cam Keith. Now he's got some speed, and Keith barrels his way close to the 10-yard line, and this will be close to another first down. The Saskatchewan offense now coming to life here. And the thing about having a quarterback that has some mobility is the fact that you can make a play like this work. It's a double fake. Then he sits back there. Now the pressure's going to come to him. You see Demetrius Maxi, but he still gets the ball over. Little slip screen. All the offensive line, Jeremy O'Day all in front of him trying to pick up a defender and allow Keith to pick up additional yards. Well, we wondered how the front page story in the leader post might affect Kenton Keith being named in an investigation into an assault that took place at a local nightclub. He's just shy of the first down. A big play there on that screen pass to move the ball just outside the 10. Well, for 60 minutes, Kent Keith will not have to worry about any investigation. All he has to worry about what he's going to do on this football field. Second and inches for Saskatchewan. Joseph now steps outside over the tackle and the big quarterback hustles his way to the one yard line. Ryan Clark made the tackle for Calgary but the defense was fooled expecting the quarterback sneak. But the best rushing quarterback in the league made the play. Well that's exactly it. He's going to go off tackle, pulls it back out, sees an opening, good block by Kent Keith to the outside. Now remember this guy rushed over a thousand yards last year. He is virtually another running back at that quarterback position. Eighth play of the drive. First and goal. Saskatchewan. Quarterback sneak. Look for the indication as he's pushed back and I don't think you got there. They'll mark it shy of the goal line. Joseph pushed back on the plunge. A great penetration at the point of attack by Napastic Maxi and Abdullah who get underneath the offensive lineman's blocks. You have to be lower than the shoulder pads and you see right there all the Saskatchewan guys you see the back of their jerseys but their legs can't go anywhere because the helmets of the state John Grace leaving his feet to help stuff the quarterback back to the one-yard line. 
second and goal from the one. Joseph, double tight formation. Everybody on the line now. He'll try again up the gut. And it's tough sledding. I don't think he got there again. And once again, Joseph is denied. Well, this just comes down to who wants it more. And I have to bring it it's this simple. You have got to protect the inside gap. The Stampeders are trying to pinch inside of those blockers and the A-gaps. Everybody's trying to get in like that. If you get underneath the block and you beat your offensive lineman inside, no play will work. Great penetration by the defense of the Stampeders. Stampeders caving that Saskatchewan offensive line. And so here we go. Third down. Goal to go. Saskatchewan at the Calgary 1. Joseph now. Handing off, arms dead wide, touchdown! Jason Armstead turns on the rocket and goes wide for the Saskatchewan touchdown on third down. Mark, this is a great call and a gutsy call because if they don't get a lead block on John Grace, this play doesn't go anywhere, because this is a wide play. It's a toss. Nothing more than a glorified toss. He's going to come around like a reverse scale side. Look at that block on Grace. That is the key block that allowed him to get to the corner. Big Chris Zarka, the fullback, with the block that sprung Armstead. Kanji has the point after. There's a flag on the play, but Saskatchewan back in this football game. Please. Jason Armstead has his first career rushing touchdown. Well, here's the key guy I want you to watch. That's Chris Zarka, the fullback. Now, as we run this play, it just looks like it's going to be a dive. Instead, it's a reverse to the outside. Freeze it there, guys. Look at this block. This is exactly what you have to do because John Grace is tied up now, and he can't make the play. And the speed of Armstead takes him to the corner of the end zone. He only needed one yard. He ran about 30. And Armstead turned on the Jets as the renegade connection continued on that drive. It was Corey Hathaway with that big 37-yard catch to kindle it. And then Armstead on third and one, taking a shallow handoff and going around the end. What a gutsy call. I like that call. J.R. Ruffin and Marcus Howell back to receive this kick. And it's touched and on the turf, and Calgary picks it up. And Kenyon Rambo is it, or rather West Cates. West Cates quick to pick up a loose football there as it came down into a crowd. But that's one thing when you're kicking into the wind, the ball will hang up. That allows your cover team to maybe possibly get in there and recover that football. Because as long as it goes over 10 yards, it's a live ball. Gets caught up in the wedge. Ball pops out. Very fortunate bounce for Wes Cates to have a roll to him. Great field position for Burris. Being booed again. First down at the 51. In the pocket. Throwing downfield for Thurman. It's too high. Eddie Davis coming across to help break it up. But throwing with the wind at his back now. Burris is getting a little bit more sail on his football. Well, we saw that happen to Kerry Joseph in the first quarter. And this ball took off on Henry Burris, who tried to hit his receiver down the sideline. The ball just a little too far for the receiver. Burris uh, saying he knows he'll be taunted again by Saskatchewan fans, but throwing 80% and two touchdowns, he's ignored <laughs> the taunts. And then Heckler is here at Mosaic Stadium. Now they're trying to get in his head. Second and ten. Saskatchewan shows blitz and drops off. Burris rolling, looking for help, throwing downfield, jump ball incomplete, Thurman going up for it, but a flag back near the line of scrimmage. And Rontarius Robinson, the defensive back in coverage there for Saskatchewan. Well, Rontarius Robinson did a nice job of staying with the intended receiver, getting his hand on the football. Behind the plate, Saskatchewan tried to bring a bit of a blitz. Was Illegal contact up. on the receiver. Saskatchewan number nine, 10-yard penalty first down. Well, that'll be Reggie Hall, but they brought Tristan Clovis, the rookie from McMaster in, and he tried to hide a blitz, blitz from the outside, and that was picked up by Joffrey Reynolds, and that allowed first to try to go downfield. 
So the illegal contact on a receiver will keep this drive alive. That would have made it third down, but it's first and ten at the 49. Burris handing off up the gut. Joffrey Reynolds slicing through that Saskatchewan defense, and he'll have a big first down on the play. That'll be a first down for the Saints. Let's go down to the sidelines now for an update. And here's Kahari. Hi, guys. It looks like T.J. Stansel has hurt his right knee. It seems that he got landed upon on the, on the field. Uh, the doctors have told him to walk around on it, and they're going to check it out in the locker room and see if he can go the second half. Guys? Tough news for that Saskatchewan defense. They moved Jackie Mitchell, another linebacker, into the safety position because they've had so many injuries. Around the end, Jermaine Copeland on the reverse. And he'll have a handful there as Calgary is trying to score on its fourth consecutive offensive possession. Gain is five, second and five. And Omar Morgan is really the guilty party. All over Kenyon Ramble, and there's the flag of the play for contacting the receiver. Second and five now, Calgary. and blitz it. Burris firing quickly. And it's incomplete. Kenyon Rambo, the intended receiver, but David Bush jarred the ball loose. That's wonderful timing by the halfback number five, David Bush, to time this. You don't want to get too, too early. You get a pass interference call. Again, Clovis coming from the bottom of your screen. On the blitz, picked up. The ball is delivered, but excellent timing by David Bush, not allowing Rambo to come up with that ball. Sandro DeAngelis already has one field goal today to make this attempt from the 37-yard line. The man who won the game against Hamilton on his last play, 45-yard field goal one week ago. Right down the middle of the pin, and it's good. So the CFL's leading kicker, DeAngelis, moves Calgary in front by 10. The termination of a warrior. And we'll let you know in the post game. Some of the big warriors on the defense of Saskatchewan, Calgary. I think you got to look at Henry Burris coming into this hostile environment. That pass nearly picked off a backside throw that was tipped at the line. And Demetrius Maxey nearly got it. Well, I'll try to go back to that little quick hitch pass to the outside. The ball gets deflected. And Demetrius Maxey doing the best impression of a receiver trying to follow that ball. He actually is the one that actually tipped the ball. Valiant effort to almost come up with an interception. Chris, they're trying to isolate Matt Dominguez on that short side. And the ball didn't get there. Second and ten. Calvary showing blitz and they bring it. Joseph bailing from the pocket. Rolling now. Wants to throw. Now he'll run across the line of scrimmage. Turning up field. Oh, and he does a helicopter spin across the 45. And the thing about Terry Joseph, Mark, he will not go to the sideline. He's not one of these guys. This guy reminds me so much of a Matt Donegan type quarterback where as soon as he takes off with the football, he's got that linebacker running back mentality where he's going to start punishing the tackler. Good pressure up the middle, forces it to the outside. I love this. Don't force a pass that's not going to be caught. Maybe turn the ball over. He turns it up and picks up a first down. We talked about Joffrey Reynolds having a 7.8 yard average carry. Joseph has a 7.2 average carry and 158 yards coming into this game, more than the rest of the running backs combined for Saskatchewan. Hand off straight up the middle, and it's Kenton Keith. And Scott Coe makes the tackle. Once again, Armstead flashing along shallow. They fake the handoff on the play in which they scored the touchdown. They're trying to get the whole Stampeder defense to go with the flow. They're dragging everybody to the right side. Everybody's going to fly this way. And then they're going to bring Keith against the flow backside, where he does a nice job of picking up seven yards. Second and three, Saskatchewan. <laughs> Four minutes and ticking to go in this second quarter. There's a mix up there, and they get the handoff to Zarkoff. The gut and the big pullback plows his way to what looks like a first down. Up 
in the spotter's booth beside Richie Hall on the far side. There's Tommy Condell, the offensive coordinator, reunited with Kerry Joseph. He was the quarterback coach there one year ago, and Condell has this software, which he calls the snapshot. Here he is in his office. He's got this on his laptop, and what it does is it shows his quarterbacks the kind of defense they're going to see, and then it drops off the screen within 1.5 seconds, and it forces the quarterback to make his read quickly and decide where he's going with the football. And Joseph says it's like rehearsing the game plan on a laptop, and it allows him to go through it before he actually gets on the football field. Well, Mark, the, the fans are a little upset with the treatment that their quarterback, Kerry Joseph, received after the whistle went. Kind of unceremoniously put on his backside. Time count violation. Saskatchewan number four. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. That's not in the game plan. And then the rub salt in the wounds. Not only does he get dumped, but he gets called for the time count. And you know what, Mark? It's one of those things that it really doesn't do justice to the viewers that Tommy Condell video. It really is pretty impressive how he gets those quarterbacks to react to situations they may see on the field. Almost like a visualization technique. It is. It just shows the quarterback how quickly he's got to make his pre-snap read and make a decision. Here's Joseph throwing now into the wind. It's complete to Richardson and it's first down territory across the Calgary 50-yard line in a gain of 10. Now you remember the Stampeders give up the most passing yards in the CFL. They'll give you between the 20s. They just tighten up a little bit by the end zones. But nice job again. And look, there's nobody around Kerry Joseph. And when you have a situation like this, when you're starting to feel comfortable, you know that you can throw that ball complete. Gorgeous day here in Regina. We're at the three-minute warning. A reminder, Canadian Tire at the half is coming up. Frerzy, Millie, E.T., and the fashion plate on the crew. Elliot Friedman will have all kinds to discuss. And back in the day, we'll take a look at the great George Reed. One piece of that great 1966 breakup champion rider team being fitted this weekend. Here's a quarterback draw. Joseph with all kinds of room. Still on his feet. Beats the first man and finally dragged down from behind. Trey Young, the safety. Grabbed him by the jersey. Finally stopped Joseph after a 22-yard game. Well, the nice thing about it is they run a six-pack of receivers, which means everybody's out of the middle. They get two offensive linemen on Brian Clark, the only guy that can hold, hopefully bring down Kerry Joseph. Great call at the line of scrimmage, but totally scripted by having a six receivers out wide. 43 yards so far on the day. And Denny Crean, the defensive coordinator, a little frustrated at stopping this running quarterback. Joseph rolling right, lots of time, flush from the pocket, goes laterally, beats the first man, gets a block, heads to the sideline, directing traffic. And they'll move the marker for five yards. We'll look back one year ago as Kerry Joseph rushed for 1,000 yards, becoming only the third quarterback in CFL history to pass for 4,000 yards and rush for 1,000, joining his running back, Josh Ronick, in the 1,000-yard club. And Mark, remember last year, they brought him back into the ball game during that game because of the fact he was injured to get that 1,000 yards. Last year, averaging close to seven yards a carry, over seven yards a carry this year, he is a threat on the ground. Here comes the blitz. Joseph reads it quickly. A look into Matt Dominguez, and Dominguez fighting for yards after the catch. Jermaine Chapman makes the tackle, but it's a 17-yard gain, and this Tommy Condell-led offense is on fire. Well, remember this. It's into the wind. Great protection. One-on-one -on -one man coverage. Dominguez working against, they consider their best cover guy, Kobe Reinhardt. He breaks it into the middle. The ball is delivered exactly where it has to be, and as a result, First down on the five-yard line. This drive starting back at Saskatchewan's 35. The wind abating a little bit, but the ninth play of this drive for Kerry Joseph and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. First and goal from the five. Joseph in the shotgun, standing tall. Touchdown, Curry Hathaway in the end zone. And a flag on the play. So the Renegade tandem connecting again. Illegal contact on a receiver. Calgary number 56. So Scott Coe called for illegal contact. Still a tight. And they're standing here at Mosaic Stadium. Mark after a rocky start in the first quarter for Kerry Joseph. 
he seems to become very comfortable back there as he that's a great grab by Corey Hathaway to go up there and juggle that ball but finally bring it down in the end zone ball not perfectly thrown but a touchdown nonetheless a five yard touchdown pass to Hathaway the point after by Kanji is good and the old renegade connection connecting in Ryder Green Corey Hathaway with his second big play of this quarter for Saskatchewan. Well, Corey Hathaway, here's Scott Cohen, there's Corey Hathaway right there. Now, as we run this play, he's just going to go to the outside, and as he jams him, Scott Cohen, illegal contact, falls down. You see him wide open as Hathaway brings it back inside to the middle of the football field. Nice spin move. Great reaction by the former renegade. Yes, Hathaway was a second-round pick in the Ottawa dispersal draft. After they took Kerry Joseph and Jason Armstead in the third in the first round, he was more of an unassuming pick, but he's loomed large here in this second home game. Fumble, ball loose, scramble for it, and Calgary got it back. J.R. Ruffin quickly scrambling after dropping the football. Well, Ruffin very fortunately because Rontarius Robinson, number 21, as you see, Danny Baird can't believe it. 21 of the of Rough Riders actually runs by the ball. You can see he tries to go back and get his hands on it. J.R. Ruffin, very fortunate to come up with that fumble recovery. Ruffin has big speed, but Tom Higgins admitting they really haven't got a return man yet on this football team. 152 on the clock. Burris now standing in the pocket, now rolling under pressure, throwing to the near sideline. It's caught. Scotty Anderson, the former NFLer, but it's incomplete. He couldn't stay in bounds. Well, that was a long throw for Henry Burris to that far sideline, trying to find the speedster, Scotty Anderson. Good pressure initially as he goes. He's trying to drag his feet to keep him in bounds, but as he comes down, you can see the feet do. Former white strip. Sorry, Chris, veteran of 34 NFL games, was the Detroit Lions' deep threat in 2003. And they love his speed here. They love to go to a six-receiver set, and that's what we have here on second down for the Stampeders. Six defensive backs in for Saskatchewan. Burris, with some time, stepping up, throwing to the wide side again to Anderson, but overthrown. Almondo Curry was right there, step for step. And so after six straight drives that involved scoring points in this football game, the Stampeder offense is forced to leave the field. Well, this is good pressure. They're going to rush three and drop nine. And they're doing a good job of taking away everything. And the man they call the Muffin Man, Armando Curry, acquired for that trade for Neilon Green from Montreal, does a nice job of staying with the speedster again, Scotty Anderson. And after being so red hot to start this game, Henry Burris, 0 for 4 in his last four passing attempts. Burke Dales gets this putt away. The wind at his back, Dominic Dorsey at his own 17-yard line, straight up the sideline, but no room there as he's forced out immediately. A minute 26 on the clock, just a field goal separating these football teams. As Joseph drops back to pass, look at the time he has, he'll run again, up the middle, sliding safely this time across the 30-yard line. The gain will be six, maybe seven on the play. The thing that's frustrating Calgary right now is when they bring the blitz, Saskatchewan is picking it up. When they only bring three, Kerry Joseph has so much time that the five offensive linemen are redirecting those defensive linemen, and Kerry Joseph just pulls the ball down and finds an opening and picks up positive yardage. Joseph was sacked eight times in two games against Calgary last year as a renegade, but feeling more comfortable behind this big veteran offensive line here in Saskatchewan. Back to pass again. Look at the time he's got. Now some pressure. Stepping up. Cool. 
throwing, and it's complete for the far sideline. Matt Dominguez makes the catch, steps out of bounds, stopping the clock with 52 seconds and a first down. Well, Jenny Creon is, is considered a guru on defense, the defense coordinator for the Stampeders, but right now only rushing three again. A pass to Abdullah and Maxi. Now he's going to step away from the initial pressure of Maxi, but he's got all day now, and as a result, the receivers can keep running. It really puts an onus on that secondary and linebacking crew to try and cover these guys all day. Fourth catch of the game for Dominguez for 66 yards as Denny Crean tries to solve this suddenly powerful Saskatchewan offense. He'll bring the blitz on this play. Passes away, complete to Jason French. Mac, or rather, Brian Clark making the tackle. A short gain on first down as we join Kahari. Thanks, guys. As you notice, both quarterbacks have had a whole lot of success throwing against the wind. And at first, that might sound strange, but I know as a quarterback, I love throwing against the wind because all you needed was a lot of velocity on the ball and a good spiral, and the ball's pretty much going to go where you want it to go. Whereas when you throw it with the wind, if you get that nose up at all, then that ball is going to fly on you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Gahari, and Jason French in traffic. And once again, just as you mentioned, Gahari, Kerry Joseph throwing with authority into this tough win. Well, Mark, you mentioned it the play previous. They brought the pressure. They limited the game. This time they go back to the three-man rush, and they're sitting in zone coverage. Jason French finds a hole between the two middle linebackers. Brian Clark and John Grayson comes up with a big catch. No time to lose in the hurry. Up 30 seconds and ticking. A high hitch to Armstead. Looking for a scene. Gets a block. Scampers outside. And forced out of bounds. Right at that first down marker with 22 seconds on the clock. And remember Jason Armstead who came in today's ball game with only six catches. And the priority was to make number one a bigger part of this offensive game plan. And we've seen that so far this first half. And they're going to measure this one very close to a first down. But Kerry Joseph in that hurry up offense really seems to find his rhythm and the advantage he says it gives him as a quarterback is it forces the defense to show its hand. Well it shows its hand it also limits what the first defense down. can send in. It is a first down Joseph looking in from the sideline getting the play. Tommy Condell radioing it down to the sidelines and onto the field. 22 seconds on the play clock. 22 seconds until halftime. Saskatchewan now. Very close to being in field goal range against the win. Joseph against the blitz. Tommy throws it out of the backfield. Canton Keith bobbles the football. And it really prevented him from turning up field. And he's hit immediately. Ruffman making the tackle for Calgary. Timeout, Saskatchewan. Well, Saskatchewan's going to call a timeout here. And he saw what happened again. We've been talking about this. This time, Calgary brings the pressure, brings the blitz. They try to unload the ball to Kenton Keith. He's wrapped up immediately for no gain or very little, if any. And now it's a second and long situation. Tommy Condell pouring over his ready list. And coming up with a play as they huddle Barrett with his quarterback on the sidelines. And Joseph coming back into the game. 12 seconds on the clock. Denny Crean trying to limit the damage here in the late going. The final minute of this first half. As the Rough Riders have stormed back offensively into the wind in this second quarter. Second down and about 10 yards. Joseph fakes. Pumps. Now he'll run outside can't get away and George White in his second game back after recovering from that torn Achilles tendon makes the tackle and will force a field goal situation for Saskatchewan what a very impressive drive nonetheless by Saskatchewan Calgary does a nice job they rush four this time there's no one to throw the ball to he brings it down but George White who led this team in tackles last year with 116 comes up with a big one there White had 10 tackles last week against Hamilton. Kanji now to attempt this field goal from the right hash marks at the 31-yard line. This will be the last play of the half. And the Stampeders now have called a timeout to make the rookie think about it. And Scott Go goes to the sideline. It seems like both these teams, Mark, really uh, excelling into the wind. They certainly have. And 
Luka Kanji now has missed only one field goal this year in his rookie campaign. Second round pick in the Canadian draft for Saskatchewan. Will attempt to tie the football game here with a 31-yard field goal. He hits it hard and true. It's good. The rookie with his second field goal of the first half on the last play of the half. And the Rough Riders have come back to tie this football game 2020 after looking overwhelmed in that first quarter. Now here's Kahari with Danny Barrett. Thanks, guys. Coach Barrett, you had great momentum going out of that first half. What do you do to keep that going? Well, we just keep building on the positive. We spotted them 17 points. We came back, tied the game up, and now really the win is going to be a factor in the second half, and we deferred for that reason. So we'll have to win the fourth, and we'll take it home from there. What do you have to do defensively to stop this team? Well, the main thing is just, you know, get our hands on their guys. You know, we got good pressure. He's throwing it up for grabs. We will come down with one or two this second half, believe me. Thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck second half. Guys? Thanks, Kahari. Confident in the head coach's voice down 17 to 3 they've come back to tie it halfway through teams are ready back on the field to start this second half all tied at 20 as we go to the Calgary bench and here's Steve with the Calgary head coach Tom, Tom Higgins. you had him down 17 to 3 do you feel like you kind of let him off the hook no you know what they they earned everything that they they got and they worked hard into the win we just have to realize don't panic it's a 0-0 football game or 2020 for whatever you'd like to however you want to work it you have to win the next 30 minutes your offense scores 20 but your defense gives up 20 what's your biggest concern going into the second half well containing the quarterback and trying to get him out of rhythm and we haven't been able to do that and he's had a all day in which to either run or to pick out receivers so the moment we start applying some pressure and covering a little bit better maybe we can enjoy this uh, earlier than uh, the last couple of seconds in this game. Tom, thanks for this. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, 37, Chris, of the 40 points scored in that first half into the wind, and after a disastrous-looking first quarter, Kerry Joseph really came alive in that second quarter. Well, 12 of 13 for 159 yards, but how about the other side of the coin? After that great start by Henry Burris, zero passing yards in the second quarter. So a tale of two quarters for the quarterbacks in this football game, and as Tom Hagan said, it's a new football game with a half to go, 2020, as Kanji sends the ball aloft held up into the wind J.R. Ruffin had it at his 25 scooting outside now reversing his field and there's nowhere to go as he's stopped on the play the Rough Riders having deferred winning the coin toss to start this game will take the wind in the fourth quarter as Henry Burris comes back onto the field to start this third quarter, and this is where he put his passes. Well, he put him up here, and this is obviously Nick Lewis right here. But look at this big one. This is the big one, the second play of the game, and that was the big 72-yarder to Elijah Thurman. Burris with three receivers to the wide side. Jenkins in behind him. And the handoff is fake. Burris with a great play action. Hustles upfield and dives across the 47-yard line. He'll have a gain of 11 and a first down. And the thing you got to remember is that Henry Burris can run with the football. Hasn't done much in the first half, but he can take off as well. I mean, he's the second-leading rusher on the Stampeder offense with 110 yards coming into today, which is a respectable 7.3 yard per carry average. You know, he may want to start doing a little emulation of Kerry Joseph and taking off with the ball himself. Burris, the number two passer coming into this weekend behind Ricky Ray. Using his legs on that first down. In the shotgun. This time he pulls it in again and fakes the Saskatchewan defense. Another great play action fake. And he'll cross midfield and another Calgary first down. And what this does is it forces Saskatchewan to designate a linebacker in a cover job on the quarterback, Henry Burris. So that takes him out of a drop or helping out with another receiver. So they can't double team the inside receivers, either Copeland or Nick Lewis. They're going to have to have one guy watching number one. 
So that's a smart play by the Calgary offense right now. And a smart move by Steve Ferrato, their coordinator. After Burris' passing game went cold late in that half, he goes on the ground with the option. There's a mix-up. He faked the wrong way. Now he fakes the shovel, and Jereniak is there to escort him out of bounds. And a short gain on the play of about five. That definitely looked like a, a broken play, as you see offense coordinator Steve Barattle sending the call into Henry Burris. They want to kind of do a quick hit to Joffrey Reynolds. As he gets it, he goes to the opposite side. There's a miscommunication, and then, of course, Smiling Hank does the rest himself and at least picks up something. Second down, four to go. We'll give him an extra yard in the carry. Burris facing the Saskatchewan blitz now. Throws a screen pass. It's complete to Elijah Thurman cutting across the field. And you'll have a first down. One of the hardest passes to defend comes out of this bunch formation where they line three receivers up to the short side. They send two deep, and they drag the third receiver underneath. And that's who the antenna receiver Elijah Thurman is right now. And he comes out, and that puts Rontarius Robinson in a terrible position because he's just in a pursuit, and he has to catch up and bring him down, but not before he picks up a first down. Henry Burris said he lobbied hard to get his former Saskatchewan receiver in red and white. Hand off up the middle, and Kitwana Jones wraps up Joffrey Reynolds immediately in a very short gain up the middle. Jones with two big sacks against BC two weeks ago, and a real force in his second year. Well, he's just going to come down the line. No one's going to pick him up, and it's just one of those things. But you got to take a look. One other aspect of that replay, it also showed that Reggie Hunt the Will linebacker picked up Henry Burris, so he had both avenues or potential offensive threats covered. Jones is so quick and so explosive. And a great addition, Danny Barrett says, on that rider defense. Second down, throwing for the end zone. Jump ball incomplete. Jermaine Copeland, the intended receiver, too high. And that drive will stall for Henry Burris. So Mondo Curry was right there in coverage for Saskatchewan. Well, Mondo Curry was in coverage. He's getting up a little limping, a little concerned about that. I think that Copeland could have caught this football. It went through his hands, and I think he's going to be more disappointed with himself because he knows that he usually can get those, and he had the inside on the cover man, Armando Curry. DeAngelis, two for two. This attempt straight down the middle at the 35-yard line with the wind at his back. Hammers the ball, and he splits the uprights. DeAngelis, three for three on the evening after Copeland's untimely drop near the goal line. at Mosaic Stadium at Taylor Field here in Regina. Stampeders nudging back into the lead on the DeAngelis field goal. And Kerry Joseph back to work after a prolific second quarter. Into the win here in the third quarter. In behind his big center. Back to pass. Look at the time. Fakes it. Now they get him. The ball is loose. And the Stampeders have it. Brian Clark has recovered the Kerry Joseph fumble. Jarred loose in the pocket. Demetrius Maxey making contact on the Saskatchewan quarterback. Well, we heard Tom Higgins say that they have to get pressure. They're bringing four guys. There's four guys rushing the quarterback. Initially, he's got all day, but he hangs on to that football. Now, he's mad at himself because he usually makes a quicker decision to pull that ball down and run with it. This time, he holds on it just a second too late, and that allows Max to knock it loose and Clark to come up with the recovery. And if there's one alarming statistic for Joseph, that's his sixth fumble in two and a half football games. Burris handing off, Reynolds runs into a roadblock. Reggie Hunt got him from below, and he was stuffed up top, but Demetrius Maxey forcing that fumble for this Calgary Stampeder football team. Well, a big play by that defense. Not only do they have great field position right now, but they can take away any momentum that, as you said before, Saskatchewan offense can continue to build on. And this Calgary defense 
led the league with 10 forced turnovers coming into this football game. That's the 11. Burris now on second down. Seven yards to go across the middle. Wide open, Jermaine Copeland. Now he's on his horse, cuts up field, and is brought down as he crosses the 13-yard line. But wide open and uncovered in the underbelly of that Rough Rider defense. Well, sitting there, and again, great protection. He's just going to step up, and then he's going to drag across the middle. And as he drags across, he's wide open in that coverage. The linebackers have dropped off. Now it becomes a foot race. Omar Morgan is trying to come over there and bring him down. He's finally brought down by Eddie Davis, but not before a huge game. Stampeders in the red zone coming into this game. On 10 occasions, they had just two touchdowns working on their finish. There's the fake. Henry Burris to the end zone, sliding for the Calgary touchdown. Burris again using the play-action fake to fool Saskatchewan, and he'll go into the end zone. And, Mark, I want when we look at this replay, you're going to see now quarterback has a... The, the intent of either handing the football off or he can actually pull it if he wants. It's his call. Now watch this. Reynolds actually thinks he's got the football. This is all Henry Burris. He decides as he reads the defense to keep the football. Reynolds actually doesn't want him to give it up. And he does a nice job of bootlegging around to the left side and picking up a touchdown. The point after is good. Ten unanswered points to start this second half for the Calgary Stampeders. Henry Burris using sleight of hand with his second rushing touchdown, Chris. Well, the biggest thing is, watch, here's Mike McCullough right here, Reggie Hunt. They switch positions. Now, Mike McCullough on the outside as we run this play, guys, he has to get upside. He has to stay with contain. He goes down with the play action. He gets trapped inside. Now, you wonder, Reggie Hunt usually plays that position. He might have been able to track down Henry Burris. Saskatchewan guessed, and they guessed wrong on that play. Deep kickoff. Armstead lost it in the sun, it looked like. Lost it again on the goal line. And now he's trapped. An unfortunate series of events as West Cates gets down to put a period on that play. And Saskatchewan down 10 points and in real top field position to start this drive. Well, they're definitely going to start on the one-yard line. Just lost the ball in the sun. And then as he tries to gather up, he overruns it. By the time he cradles it, Chris Cates brings him down on the one-yard line. Big opportunity for this Calgary defense to create wonderful field position for their offense if they can hold Saskatchewan here. Shades of last game against BC here at Mosaic Stadium when they did the same thing and Terry Joseph marks them downfield for the winning touchdown. First down, their own one-yard line. Joseph conservative to Keith, and look at Keith bounce outside. Getting outside into the secondary and hammering his way. He loses the football. Saskatchewan picks it up. It was Jamal Richardson right there to get a rough rider bounce. And a huge escape from the goal line, but a flag back at the 11. Flag back at the 11, but Saskatchewan very fortunate because this Major ball is stripped. Unnecessary roughness. Saskatchewan number 60, 15-yard penalty from the point the ball went dead. First well, down. Gene Mikowski, the culprit, the right tackle, the two-time outstanding offensive lineman for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders at that right tackle position with the call. What a terrible penalty to take. Well, Ken Keith is just going to take it. He bounces it to the outside, and then he breaks it back inside and starts popping around. And this is what you see, and you know that Ken Keith could do. But the ball comes off. Trey Young knocks the ball out. But you see Jamal Richardson, Johnny on the spot with the recovery, but all for naught as a penalty to Gene Mikowski brings it back. Back-to-back -back fumbles for Saskatchewan. They've got to protect the football. Joseph, short drop. He drops it again. Ball is loose, and there's a scramble for it. And the Riders get it back. Andrew Green, the right guard, falls on it. That's three fumbles in a row by the Saskatchewan offense. And Raheem Abdullah, this time the instigator, causing that loose ball. Well, it, it almost looks like two different defenses here when I'm talking about Calgary. I mean, here they're bringing four guys. That's a great swim move. 
by Raheem, Raheem Abdullah to come from that left side and swim Gene Mikowski. Mikowski probably thinking about that penalty, just gets beat to the inside. That might have been Charles Thomas. I won't pick on Mikowski, but great move by Abdullah. A loss of seven on the play. Joseph in the pocket. And he has a completion at the 20-yard line as Kenton Keith goes down to make the catch. And we'll look at Kerry Joseph's pass distribution in that first half. Well, you know he's got the one touch touchdown pass right here to Corey Hathaway. He's also got the big completion at 35 yards to Hathaway up top. But his comfort zone is right here in the middle. And if you're going to throw the ball successfully here, you better get protection from the offensive line. Something he hasn't got, Mark, in this series. What do you do here? Do you concede a safety and try to... Dig yourself out of this field position hole. Well, you're down by 10 points right now. If you go 12, you're still two converted touchdowns from winning. Kanji standing at his five, running the clock down. Nearly has it blocked. Chevrier is right there, a bad bounce. Rambo takes it at center field and a flag on the play. No yards will be the call. And Bud Steen announcing before this game that the CFL has gone back to its old no yards penalties. They used to call 15 yards on a play like this to begin the season. Now it'll be five. Well, it used to be terrible because I, I didn't like it because if you're caught within the five five yard range, it was 15. The old days, if you're caught within the five, it's five. But if you're still trying to go through that five yard to hit the returner, yeah, it's 15 and maybe tacked on an additional 15. What do you think about them going back in midseason to the old rules? You know what? I, I, I like it. I really do, Mark. I think I've seen a couple plays where returners, the guy tries to get out of there. He's caught within a five and his 15 yards. It's just too much yards for that type of penalty. Too punitive. Absolutely. So terrific field position for the Stampeders as they start this drive at the 49-yard line of Saskatchewan. Bunch formation to the field. Pitch out, Joffrey Reynolds and David Bush filling from his weak side halfback position will make the tackle low on Reynolds. The gain will be four. Four yards and a nice job of David Bush to come up and take the legs out from the powerful Joffrey Reynolds. And he's one of these guys now, as you said earlier, jokingly, the new offseason training regime of pushing a suburban around the block to build up the, the power. But you can see right there, if you take the legs out of any locomotive, you'll usually stop it. Also studying yoga, a bit like uh, Ricky Williams. Now they've got Reynolds split to the wide side, a six-receiver formation. Burris wants to throw deep. He goes downfield. Nick Lewis is open, and he dropped the football. Oh, my. Right through his hands. And a busted coverage because Nick Lewis is way too open down that sideline. David Bush, he was way out of the picture, and he can tell you right now, he's looking up saying thank you after this one. Wide open, and just through the hands. I wonder if maybe the wind pushed it a little bit at the last minute, but well, that also, should have been caught. Also remember Jason Armstead in the opening of that kickoff had a hard time handling that ball as well, so maybe that's something as a factor. Maybe affected Nick Lewis. The Angelus will attempt his longest field goal of the season from the 52. At the right hash mark, he's got the win. Does he have the distance? Yes! Just barely. So, Calgary's field goal kicker is still perfect on the evening. That's the wall of honor here at Mosaic Stadium at Taylor Field. And uh, amongst those honored, the name of Ron Lancaster. He'll be known to Rough Rider fans everywhere as number 23, the little general. How special was this to get together with all the guys that won that championship 40 years ago? Well, we were the first team ever won for Saskatchewan. And I, I don't know who came up with the idea, but you know, there's some guys here we haven't seen in 20, 30 years. And Bruce Bennett was a great friend of mine, roommate, and to get opportunity to spend some time with him and his wife, Starling, 
it, it's out of sight. It, 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 it's been a, a blast the whole four days. I mean, I've been here since Wednesday, and I've had a ball. Ron, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you this question. The team you now work for, the Hamilton Ticats, own four of the shoot. The rumor has it the head coach's job could be on the line. Would you go back down on the sidelines if you were offered the job? Uh, you know what? I don't know anything about that. You know, when I left Wednesday, they were going to Montreal to play a ball game. I haven't talked to anybody back there. Uh, Bob Young and, and Rob Katz and Christopher Dean, they do a pretty good job running the football club. I think I'll let them make all their decisions. Thanks very much for this time. Thank you. Yeah, right. Thank you for a good time. Guys, thanks, Steve. <laughs> yes, the little general showing some football diplomacy on the sidelines here. And what a weekend it's been. They're all staying in our hotel here at the Hotel Saskatchewan. It's been great to see them mingling in the lobby. Well, you know what? Yesterday, I remember last evening, we saw Eagle Keys. Yeah. And, I mean, I was honored to come over and, you know, introduce himself to us. And we're like, oh, man, I mean, it was a great, it's a great moment to see some of these legends. The Undertaker, Bill Baker, they're having a lot of fun. It certainly are a great 40th anniversary weekend here in Regina for their 1966 original champions. Play action, foot problems for Joseph. He bails, and he's caught before he can get out of the pocket. Right at the line of scrimmage, Raheem Abdullah, the culprit who forced the fumble, now makes a big tackle. Well, that play seemed to be destined to failure right off the bat as we watch Raheem. Working inside, but it just, the whole thing came apart when Kerry Joseph lost his footing as he tried to sit up to throw that ball. And as he scrambled to regain himself, Raheem Abdullah brought him down. Tackle for a loss of one on the play by Abdullah. Second and 11, Saskatchewan. Calgary motioning to the blitz. They'll bring it up the middle with Clark. Joseph standing tall, a foot route to Dominguez. It's incomplete. And Kobe Reinhardt was right on his back. And Saskatchewan will have to punt. So the wheels falling off this Saskatchewan offense here in the third quarter. Well, this time Matt Dominguez is bringing to the inside. And Kerry Joseph throws the ball to his outside. He tries to adjust. You see him turn his body. Tries to get his hands on the ball, hoping to make a great circus catch. Can't do it. Good coverage by Kobe Reinhardt, not allowing him to step forward to that football. But all in all, the ball just thrown behind him. And perhaps the effects of the knee injury on Dominguez, he was unable able to generate any separation there on Reinhardt. Bobble snap. Kanji had to make sure, and he just gets it away. At full speed, it's Rambo, and he's tackled immediately. Duncan Chernofsky for Saskatchewan. Stampeders at their own 35-yard line. 13 unanswered points here in the third quarter. Burris, this time he hands off to Joffrey Reynolds, and again, he's got Saskatchewan guessing, using that play action, that option like football in the shotgun. Something he didn't do in the first half. He came out in the third quarter and established the bootleg, took off with the ball three times in that drive that led to the eventual touchdown. And when you do that, That'll spread your defense out. They can't keep everybody in the box. They've got to respect the quarterback. And on that particular play, Reynolds just hit the hole and made him pay. Nine carries for 60 yards so far for Joffrey Reynolds. Again, they go back to that play. And Burris holds on. He throws, and it's knocked down. Ontario's Robinson, the dive back in the Saskatchewan secondary, all over Henry Burris. Well, both teams making adjustments on the go. And on this play, they're going to bring from the outside this time. And what happens is, last time they were allowing Henry Burris to get to the outside. This time, Ontario's Robinson is there to make sure he doesn't get it, forces him to throw the ball, and knocks it down in the process. Danny McManus, a 17-year veteran, backing up, telling me the other day that he watches one half of the field for Henry. Bill Dietrich, the quarterback coach, is up in the booth watching the other half. And David Corley, the third-string quarterback, watches 
is the free safety for Burris. He's got all kinds of eyes. And that time, Burris throws a strike to Nick Lewis, who gets up. He wasn't knocked down. He got up for another five yards, and Reggie Hunt had to put the tackle on him. Well, I thought Armando Curry thought he touched him, and that's why he didn't go after. Nick Lewis, after he made the reception, she's going to leak through. Good protection. The ball's now, as he goes down, you see the touch right there. He's touched him. He's down by contact. So he doesn't chase him. Reggie Hunt has to come over and bring him down later. But they did bring the ball back on that. So Burris marching again. Nick Lewis with that spectacular first half hurdling touchdown for Calgary. Fake pitch, fake handoff, back to pass. Burris under pressure, gets away from Perry, buys some time, throws down to the end zone, deep ball, too far. It was intended for Scotty Anderson, and it was just out of his reach. Well, they're pulling all kind of tricks out of the bag here. The fake reverse. We thought Copeland had it, and of course he kept it, and he tried to go deep downfield to connect with his receiver to back of the end zone. You're just joining us. The game summary so far. 34 of the first half points against the wind in that big second play offensive play for Calgary the 72 yard touchdown to Thurman and Joseph using his legs in that first half the Saskatchewan with some fumble trouble in this third quarter it's second and long second and ten Calgary Burris straight back in trouble throws it across the middle of the field and Copeland can't hold on going down low in front of Eddie Davis and that will end this drive as DeAngelis comes back onto this football field and Sandro DeAngelis perfect here this evening four for four and really unbelievable to think Chris he was undrafted last year nobody took him in the Canadian draft because he wasn't the starter at Nebraska for 10 months he was a free agent until Calgary GM Jim Barker put him on Calgary's neck list. Well, this guy is in the zone. He is just oozing confidence. We saw him kick a 52-yarder already. This attempt from the 43. Brett Roth with the pin. The ball is up. And good. So make it five for five in the field goal department for DeAngelis, who ran off the field after that last play 45-yarder against Hamilton. Oh, I know where you're going with this one. <laughs> Tom Higgins was saying he wanted to take his shirt off like a soccer player, but he warned them not that wouldn't be a, a good thing for the eye. Well, they always said, hey, two people in two positions, you don't want to have your jerseys off, and that's kickers and old linemen. <laughs> well, I can see old linemen. Oh, hey, come on now. <laughs> But he's so full of confidence, and he's having a terrific start to this season. Now good on 15 of 16 field goals, and his longest here tonight from 52 yards. This will be the last play of the third quarter. Last play into the wind for Kerry Joseph and the Saskatchewan offense. Motion by Zarka. Play action rolling, and that was red. Joseph spins away from the contain man. It was Brian Clark who was all over that and nowhere to go as the gun sounds for Joseph. straight ahead here at Mosaic Stadium. Henry Burris, a 13-yard touchdown and three DeAngelis field goals in that third quarter. Well, there's five guys and they're going to rush against five defensive linemen and, and there's Zarka at six. It should never happen. And they just wrap Brian Clark around the outside. Nobody picks him up. Results in a sack by Brian Clark. Breakdowns on that O-line. Second and 14 on the loss by Joseph. Standing, throwing to the wide side is behind Armstead. And incomplete. Let's check the three-quarter statistics. Well, I think the fact is we had one turnover by Saskatchewan, but the three fumbles, Mark, we talked about that. Kerry Joseph, two fumbles. Kent Keith, a fumble. And the fact is they've only had two first downs, Saskatchewan, in the third quarter. And how about Calgary? They kicked 16 points. 
in that one quarter. And I know it's all Sandro Giangelis. Yes, with his three field goals and, of course, the Burris rushing touchdown. The Riders trailed 15-11 entering the fourth quarter at this stadium two weeks ago against BC. Down 16, though, with the win and having to punt it away. It's Luka Kanji with a nice high spiral with the wind at his back. And the return right up the middle by Kenyon Rambo. He stopped quickly, shy of the 45-yard line. A reminder, the CFL on CBC heading east to Winnipeg as the Montreal Alouettes meet the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Bombers winning on the road today to become the second road warrior team this year, defeating the Toronto Argonauts. And after that huge crushing victory over Edmonton at home last week, fans will be hungry for tickets. And you know what? They'll be going against the other team that's won the road, the only other team that's Montreal. So it's a 3-1 and one against the 3-0 and old Alouettes. What a game that'll be next weekend at Winnipeg Stadium. It will. And remember how that defense held Anthony Calvillo to 205 yards past Passing in the season opener, people wondered was Calvillo not up to his uh, you know regular season style and performance. But after that dominating performance against Edmonton last week and now beating Toronto, the Blue Bombers certainly making their presence felt in this rebuilding season under Doug Barry. I love the fact that when we watched the preseason or looked at the media. They did all these power rankings, and Winnipeg, pretty much everybody's power ranking rating was at number eight. And they slowly crept up to where they're in the middle of the pack right now. Yes, tied three wins apiece with Montreal. So a first place battle in Winnipeg early in the season. How about that? Who would have predicted it? Burris in the shotgun. He'll hand off this time to Joffrey Reynolds, and he'll smash his way up the middle. That is a great stutter step. He froze the defender in his tracks, took one step to the right, watch the pressure. You're going to have guys coming right up the middle. Now watch the step. He just freezes Nate Davis and goes to the outside. Not only is he powerful, but he's got great footwork. Joffrey Reynolds, nice play on that. It's kind of like two offenses from Calgary from what we saw in the first half, that vaunted passing attack to this option-like ground game here in the second half. Back to pass, Burris stepping up across the middle. It's complete to Kenyon Rambo. Breaks a tackle, speeds down the sideline. And a huge pickup, his biggest reception of the football game. As the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are burned for 43 yards through the air. You know, Mark, uh, in the second quarter, Calgary couldn't get any pressure on on Kahari, or Kerry Joseph, excuse me. And he really hurt them. Right now, Saskatchewan, look at this man coverage. And they're just beat badly. And then sloppy tackling by Frontarius Robinson and David Bush. And that allows uh, K Keon Rombo to even pick up more yards. 43 yards on the broken tackles, and Rambo has Calgary in the green zone again. Up the middle, play action, pitch out, and Rambo takes the pitch and is hammered through the advertising signboards out of bounds, and he's forced out at the eight-yard line. And this will be close to a first down. Yes, it looks like they'll have it. Nice job again to run the play action. He runs that deliberate play action. What I mean by that is he deliberately puts the ball deep into Joffrey Reynolds and then pulls the ball, really forcing that defense to respect Joffrey Reynolds. He gets outside, does a little pitch to Rambo. Option football, bewildering this rider defense. First down, they'll hand off to Reynolds. And Reggie Hunt makes the stop. The gain is three to the five of Saskatchewan. Well, yeah, Saskatchewan, who has not given up until that Burris run, a rushing touchdown today. Right now, going to have to try and stand tough at their own five-yard line. The second down from the five-yard line, second and goal. Or Calgary threatening again here threatening to put this football game out of reach. Saskatchewan blitzing. Burris under pressure, throwing for the end zone. It's complete for a touchdown. Elijah Thurman with his second touchdown in his return to Saskatchewan. Elijah Thurman, the rider free agent. 
playing in Calgary for the first time this season. And he's spoiling this return for the Ryder fans. Well, this was just a case of Saskatchewan bringing the blitz, trying to put some pressure. You see Tristan Clovis come from the outside. And as he does that, he throws the ball up. Now, this is what's great about having a tall receiver. Thurman just climbs the ladder. He's 6'3 already, so he's got an advantage over the defensive back. He just goes up high and brings that pass in. Beating Rontarius Robinson for the touchdown. A five-yard strike and his second of this football game. Autographs at a premium this weekend. 31. That belonged to Gluey Huey. Hugh Campbell, when he's not running the Edmonton Eskimos, he's here enjoying the 40th anniversary. What a great combination. Lancaster to Campbell. One of the great tandems. And they hooked up back in 66 as the Riders beat the Eastern Riders, the Ottawa Rough Riders, in that great cup. Dominic Dorsey now straight up the field. Gets some nice blocks still on his feet and finally pushed out of bounds across the midfield stripe. The edge is the kicker in on the play, and now there's a flag. Take a look, Mark, at Elijah Thurman. Five catches, 99 yards. Obviously the first one, the first pass of the game, 72 yards. And he comes out with a five-yard one, five-yard touchdown reception previous to this kickoff. Holding Saskatchewan 49. 10-yard penalty. Mike Mahoney called for holding, and so they'll bring back that promising return. The Calgary Stampeders have been opportunists on offense in this football game. They have scored points on 9 of 10 offensive drives. Joseph looking to the short side across the middle. He has a completion. And it's Richardson making the catch in traffic as Scott Coe makes the tackle. A gain of about six. The sidelines, Danny McManus taking some snaps from John Komiski. Might he be ready to make his first appearance as a stampede this season? Well, I think when you have a 23-point lead with 10 minutes and taking left, I think is a great chance you'll see the future Hall of Famer, Danny McManus, at the controls. Second and three. And Zarka gets the handoff up the middle, and it looks like he'll crash over that 50-yard stripe for a first down. Let's go out of the sidelines as one quarterback analyzes another here this evening. Kahari. Thanks, guys. One of the things I've noticed is Calgary made a lot of halftime adjustments, and most of them had to do with the rush. They're bringing people from all angles. They're bringing linebackers. They're bringing defensive backs. And they're doing uh, some changes on the front line. And it, it's hurt Kerry Joseph a whole lot because he's been under more pressure and he hasn't gotten to the same rhythm that he did in the first half. Thanks. Yeah, it seemed like Joseph had all kinds of time in that second quarter when they scored all those points. And we, you know, we showed Denny Crehan and we said, you know what, he can't leave with that three-man rush because they were picking him apart. And then Kerry Joseph was taken off with the ball himself a lot, hurting the defense. Now they started to bring guys from the outside and actually caused two fumbles in the third quarter by Kerry Joseph and really seemed to unsettle him. Second down, three to go in the shotgun. Pump action, he wants to go deep. And it's complete. Oh, what a catch by Matt Dominguez on the pump and go down the sideline and a huge first down for Saskatchewan. Hey, I'll tell you what, Dominguez made a great catch, but what a throw. This is... An example of the arm strength. Look at this strength because I tell you what, Kobe Reinhardt is right there. He thinks he's going to knock this ball down. It's between double coverage. He's going to be between Kobe Reinhardt. Number three. Look at he goes up there, and there's Trey Young, the safety, coming over. That's a beautifully thrown ball by Kerry Joseph. We got a trademark hit from Trey Young. Holding on for a big gain of 28. Rolling now, Joseph. Shadowed and throws it away. A wise decision, perhaps, when he... Really had no idea where he wanted to go with the football under pressure. That was a great job of getting rid of the football because Brian Clark was there and he couldn't get almost like a basketball player where you're trying to get him to freeze and jump in the air when you can run around him. Brian Clark, number 48, is going to come right around there. He's not going to let it go. Watch him leave his feet. He jumps. He's just following him. He's never getting out of out of control. And that forces Kerry Joseph to throw that ball. 
Staff eaters always have somebody on contain and have really limited Kerry Joseph from running, threatening that line of scrimmage here in the second half. Here comes the Calgary Blitz. Joseph stepping up under pressure, fires the ball out of bounds and incomplete, and a flag on the play. This is going to go against the sketch. It's going to be a holding call, and once again, these front four of the staff Peters now bring a linebacker because they only have three real down linemen per se but they're just causing all kind of confusion to the offensive line and once again we see a breakdown and a hold holding Saskatchewan 53 penalties decline third down well that would be Charles Thomas and he's right over here they keep flopping sides so sometimes he plays weak side sometimes he'll play strong side and Saskatchewan has no choice but to gamble here on third and ten. Down by 23. They need three two-point converted touchdowns to win. 8.47 on the clock. Timeout Calgary. And the Stampeders have called a timeout. And that will give Josephs a chance to come to the sideline and think about their third down gamble on the play call. Well, Brian Clark is yelling over Denny Crean, too, to get the right call, and uh, there was some concern about what they were doing defensively on that play, and a smart move by the defensive cap, Brian Clark, to signal to the defensive coordinator to send that call in. See offensively, Coach Danny Baird, Marcus Crandall, conferring with Kerry Joseph. Joseph under pressure in the second half. A couple of fumbles. And there's George Cortez, the offensive line and running backs coach, trying to get something going with Tommy Condell on the Saskatchewan offense. Back to pass in the pocket across the middle. It's complete to Matt Dominguez. A post in traffic and a first down on that third and ten gamble. Well, third and ten gamble, Mark. Calgary rushes four, so they draw everybody back into a zone coverage. Now, when they drop in the zone, it's up to the receiver to find the hole behind the linebackers and in front of the defensive backs, and that's exactly what Jamal Richardson does, or is that Matt Dominguez? They move Dominguez into the slot, change of alignment on that play, and it's first and goal from the three. Play action, hitch pass to the wide side. Jason Armstead with a stutter step and a touchdown. Armstead with his second touchdown of the football game. And Saskatchewan will have to go for two here to try to close this big gap. But again, the big third down gamble. Dominguez paid off, got him down. They go to the quick hitch pass. Throw it out wide, little play action. Nice job of blocking by the receiver to the wide side to allow Jason Armstead to break it back in to the middle of the field and across the goal line. Saskatchewan looking for two. Joseph, quick drop, throws the looking pass. It's incomplete, a flag on the play, and there was contact. Dominguez, the intended receiver, but Kobe Reinhardt may have had his hands all over him. Well, Kobe Reinhardt was basically shielding. He was not playing the football. He was playing the receiver, and as a result, did not allow the receiver in any opportunity to catch the ball. Calgary number three, penalty is in goal. The captain has another attempt with the one. Just working here, and you can see he's got his hands all over Matt Dominguez. The head is solely pointed at Matt Dominguez and not even looking at the football. They're going to throw the flag on that every time. So they move the ball to the one-yard line, down repeated here on this two-point conversion attempt by Saskatchewan. 7.40 and counting left in regulation time. Two receivers to the wide side. Joseph from the one-yard line. Heavy offense, a pitch to the short side, and Ken Keith will saunter into the end zone. It fooled everybody on the Calgary side of the line of scrimmage. The two-point convert is good. The stoic Ken Keith has the two-point convert on a terrific fake. Well, they ran the reverse, the fake reverse to Jason Armstead, who'll come on your screen, and then just pitch it over here to Ken Keith because the, the whole defense is sliding 
to the opposite way. They bite on that reverse because Armstead scored on it early in the game. This time they take advantage of that pursuit and Kent Keith untouched into the end zone. So the Stampeder lead is now 15. And J.R. Ruffin with the return. They fake the reverse and he gets a great burst of speed outside and a great wall across midfield. And J.R. Ruffin, who has all kinds of speed at 4-3 in the 40, with a huge return on the play of 49 yards as Danny McManus makes his first appearance as a Calgary Stampeder, 17-year veteran who came over to Calgary in a trade from Edmonton for a third-round pick. And as Tom Hagan said yesterday, it was a steal. Oh, it was a steal. I mean, the guy here's a 41-year-old guy who's got a lot of life left in him. Is really loves this game 284 football game today and a great mentor for Burris now he gets a chance for live action his first pass is incomplete Joffrey Reynolds was the intended receiver in the flats Henry Burris now taking a spot on the sideline and working the clipboard this was his day well, you know, you look at 13 to 23, not overly impressive numbers, but the big thing that'll stand out is the three touchdowns, and that'll win you football games. What a way to calm the crowd here. They were heckling as he came on the field. His second play was that 72-yard bomb to Elijah Thurman, another former Rough Rider. Van is now in second and ten in the shotgun. Dropping back throwing downfield and it's complete to Nick Lewis going up for the football across the 30 and a Calgary first down and the thing that you have to remember about Danny McManus is he is a quick read artist he gets rid of the football every team he's ever played for that offensive line will yield the fewest sacks because he just gets rid of the football so quickly he's got great pre-snap reads and that's obviously because of his experience in the league spent Three and a half quarters charting this football game and, and a great idea of what works against Saskatchewan. Now getting a chance to employ it. Handing off to Joffrey Reynolds. Right up the gut. He bounces outside of the 10. Touchdown. My goodness. Cutting a swath 29 yards wide through that Saskatchewan defense. And they head for the exit at Mosaic Stadium. Well, that... Extra point will bring us a big 5-0. And remember, we talked to Danny Baird yesterday, and he said one of the things that concerns him is he's got to play this team three times in five weeks. And you always want to win games against your Western opponents, and especially when you're at home. Oh, he left Jackie Mitchell flat-footed as he got into the secondary and burst 29 yards for the touchdown. Joffrey Reynolds with his first touchdown of the season. The point after is good, and it's 50-28 Calgary. Steve Barato says that Joffrey Reynolds is the most exciting back he's ever coached, and he sure showed it there, a 29-yard run. Right through traffic. All right through traffic, and right through that Saskatchewan defense, and again, sloppy tackling at the point of, at the point of attack. And the Saskatchewan defense has allowed 119 points now in three games. That's 40 points a game. Another fumble on the kick return. The ball is loose. Stampeders pouncing. Do they have it? And a fight down there in the crowd as Wes Lysak gets up, thrown away, and once again, a turnover hurting this team as the Calgary offense comes back on the field, and Kerry Joseph will just take a seat. A miserable second half. Uh, just loses the football right through. Dominic Dorsey, who was special team player of the week in week number one, just can't find the handle on that ball, and it bounces there, and it seems like it just sits there for an eternity before a Calgary Stampeder jumps on it. Four fumbles tonight, two lost by Saskatchewan. McManus back to work after making swift work on his first appearance. He goes back to Reynolds. Look at Reynolds negotiating the middle of that Saskatchewan defense. A flag in the backfield. This may be coming back as Reynolds moved 10 yards upfield. Now that'll just be, a, I believe, a holding call against this. Holding. Calgary. 
62, 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Well, let's go back and take a look at that last touchdown run by Joffrey Reynolds. And I want to show you something though. We got a big man rusher, but watch Reggie Hunt as we run this fellas. Run a little bit forward. And here's Reggie Hunt. He's got to make the play at the point of attack. Run it through. This is number nine. You got to make the play in a hole. Now he does do that, but freeze it again, guys. Look at the block over here now. Great job of the receiver downfield. That springs Reynolds into the secondary, and he does the rest himself. Jackie Mitchell coming back after missing last week with a knee injury was flat-footed as Reynolds hit his top gear. Here's a screen pass to Wes Cates, and he's got all kinds of daylight as Saskatchewan has lost its will here in the waning minutes of this football game. Oh, they're just beating on him right now. They have given up, and this is not a pretty sight. Wes Cates gets an opportunity to come in at that running back position. The rookie out of California. Little screen pass, dump it over the middle. Finds the protection, finds some block, and lowers the shoulder and runs through with some would-be tacklers. Wes Gates getting to play some football. He had his first CFL carry for three yards against Hamilton. And a big gain there of 24 on the screen. Up the middle again. A short gain this time for Cates. And let's go to the sidelines. And once again, Kahari Jones. Thanks, guys. I think bringing Danny McManus in at this time was a great move for the Calgary Stampeders. One of the main things is that Danny McManus needs some time in there. You never know if something's going to happen to your starting quarterback. And to have a backup like Danny McManus, I think, is valuable. But you want to get him some time. And Henry Burris accounted for 43 points. I think that was a, a good day's work that he put in. Guys? No question, Kahari. And McManus, of course, content to be the mentor, the backup, throwing back side on his back foot. And that falls to the turf incomplete. But McManus has been content to mentor Henry Burris to be his second set of eyes on the sideline and to go to him quietly and to tell him what he sees. You know, did that end bite on the play action? You know, that bootleg is open next play. Whatever. He's always there. And Burris is benefiting from his 17 years of experience. Well, you couldn't have said any better, Mark. That's the fact that we went to dinner with Danny McManus last night. And he was telling us how much he enjoys this organization and the way they're utilizing him right now. He feels like he's part of the, you know, the program right now. And Look how svelte he is. He says he's in his best shape ever, working out hard in Calgary. The chance to see some live action. This is the... Sixth attempt from the 30-yard line this time, and once again, Sandro DeAngelis splits the upright. Six for six tonight. Well, it's funny. You take a look at uh, Danny Mack, and you're talking about how spelt he is. I just think it's a fact he's got his wife out here with him now, and she's not even letting him eat all that garbage food anymore. <laughs> Log on to cbc.ca slash CFL in the second half here. Well, we've only got 2.59 to go. Cast your vote for Warrior of the Game and decide who showed true character of a football warrior. And there's Smiling Hank. He came in, faced the adversity of a hostile crowd and quelled that. How about the kicker? Would you pick a kicker for Warrior? Come on. You know better than that even showing him. <laughs> Jerson across the middle. It's complete to Richardson. And he's tackled after gaining the first down, a gain of 12 on that pass. You know, the thing about when you look at what Henry Burris did today, the fact is Saskatchewan shut him out. The second quarter, he didn't have one yard passing. And we thought the tide was definitely turning, and he came right out in the third quarter, started to run with the football. Option himself, football. Option football. And all of a sudden, it all opened up for him, and he fought himself and got in rhythm again. Gaping huge gains on the option. Out of the backfield, Kenton Keith makes the catch and has another yard past the first down marker a gain of 11 on the play and let's revisit your rona game notes this time featuring saskatchewan to start with. well for saskatchewan we said don't set up like a stone that was Ter terry joseph we didn't want him to do a, a straight drop back we wanted him to get outside he did that 60 yard rushing two touchdown passes unfortunately he shut him down in the second half on defense reynolds wrap we said you got to stop joffrey reynolds he will hurt you did last year 97 Seven yards rushing, a touchdown, and becoming a bigger factor as you're trying to end this football game. I know you don't want to vote for a kicker, but, you know, DeAngelis is six for six. He did it last year against Saskatchewan in October. He was six for six. That's his career high. The record for Calgary is Mark McLaughlin, eight field goals against Saskatchewan as well. So these Calgary kickers have enjoyed 
prolific days against Saskatchewan and Cedric Williams is being held off, hopping on one foot, the rookie corner out of Kansas State. Uh, no, throw well, I make fun of Sandra Jangelis, but I tell you what, he is what every coach wants out of a kicker, confident. So he's getting Henry's autograph there on the bench. <laughs> Pass in and out of the hands of Kenton Keith, and then John Grace flattens Kerry Joseph and a flag in the backfield. And that's not exactly what he was doing. See, when you have a kicker, nobody will hang with your kicker. So now these six for six. Major foul, rubbing the passer, Calgary number seven, 15-yard penalty, it's first down. Well, that's John Grace. But what's happening now, these six for six, Henry Burris is telling him where they're going to party after. <laughs> He's going to be one of the guys now. Well, he said he still hurts that there's so much resentment over the fact he left this organization as a free agent one year ago. And we're seeing this week in Calgary in the press that people don't know all the details. He was telling me yesterday that his team, Saskatchewan, wanted to trade him for Kerry Joseph when he returned from the NFL in 2003. And he's happy in Calgary. And I think he has a thicker skin now coming back here for the second time and guiding his team to a one-sided victory, a 53-28 lead with 2.12 to go. Well, I remember last year when he came back the first time as he led them back to victory, he actually stood on the bench and pointed to his helmet and got the crowd quite excited. Jason French on the short hook, and they'll have the first down. On second and three, moving the sticks with 2.03 on the clock. And the positive about this drive for Kerry Joseph for the Saskatchewan offense is that head coach Danny Baird and everyone will look at who is playing out the full football game and who is quit. Joseph under pressure. Outlet pass to Kent Keith, a move on Scott Coe. He slips up the sideline and the Stampeder defenders go into the signboards. And they'll spot the ball across the 10-yard line. And that will be another first down. Well, a nice job of swinging that ball out to Canton Keith, but they're playing against a very relaxed Calgary Stampeder defense right now. With the lead they have right now, they're just playing soft. This Calgary offense, we talked about the fact they were 10 times in the red zone coming into this game and had only two, two touchdowns, making more use of their opportunities here tonight as Kerry Joseph is ransacked from behind. The ball is loose, and Tony Tiller is in on the plate from his secondary position. Former BC Lion who lost his job with the Lions and has found a place in this Calgary secondary. In behind Corey Banks. Uh, Tony Tiller got to get in there as well as uh, Terrence Patrick, number 93, who gets to play in relief of Demetrius Maxey. Corey Banks, of course, arriving in BC uh, on the Renegade dispersal and taking his job. And let's look at your game notes now for Count. Well, we talked about, you just hit it on the head. I should let you do the game notes, Mark, because we talked about Killer Instinct, the fact that they were in the red zone 10 times previous, only two touchdowns. Well, look at this. Points 11 of 12 offensive possessions, and they did score some points in the red zone. Exactly what they wanted. We talked about the pressure. You had the pressure. Kerry Joseph, and they run a lot of zone defense behind that. They had some trouble in the first half. They made some adjustments. Denny Crean should get the credit. They did a good job of rattling Terry, Kerry Joseph and two sacks of fumble recovery. He really hasn't been the same player in the second half. This Calgary offense, of course, their two previous wins coming down to the wire, the DeAngelis last play field goal against Hamilton, and then Nick Lewis with that last-minute touchdown catch to beat Edmonton. But on this night, Henry Burris taking full advantage of that talent-laden offense. 53 points on the scoreboard here tonight. And Maxey slow to get up on that play after being banged up. In the red zone, we have the statistics now for Calgary. Inside the 20, in that red zone, or green zone, as it were, 5 for 5 with 27 points scored. So Tom Higgins looking for more production, finishing off drives, and Burris, all smiles, he delivered tonight. Big time, and there's the offense coordinator, Steve Rattle, gave him a little hug and a, a smile. Good job, well done. Burris coming back to Saskatchewan and spoiling their 40th breakup anniversary. 
Joseph now throwing for the end zone. Armstead was open. The ball sailing too far and incomplete. Well, Kerry Joseph just trying to put some points on the board, working the way all the way down into the red zone of the Calgary Stampeders, but unfortunately this ball just sails away from him. Out past the contender receiver, Jason Armstead. So third down, 12 yards to go, and nothing to lose for Saskatchewan as they go for it. Here comes the Calgary Blitz. Joseph throwing in the end zone. Wide open. Jason Armstead for his third touchdown of the football game. Well, they take advantage of a breakdown between George White and I believe Jerron Ruffin because they both jumped on Jason French and allowed Jason Armstead to find the back of the end zone. Both defenders are up watching number six and number one slides behind them. So for the second time tonight, Kerry Joseph engineers a touchdown on a third down gamble, and Armstead has both of them. Third and one in the first half, and third and 12 here. Three touchdowns for Armstead, the one bright spot perhaps on this Saskatchewan offense. Not giving up with a minute 30 to go. Down by 19 points. It is academic. Two-point convert. Joseph pumping, throwing to the end zone. It's complete for two points to Matt Dominguez. And 130 left here in the fourth quarter. Ron Lancaster, the architect of that 1966 Rough Rider Grey Cup. Ed McQuarters, one of the big men on the line of scrimmage. Not happy sitting through this debacle here. There's Al Ford, former executive here, caught a touchdown pass in that 66th great cup from Ronnie Lancaster. Able to brave a smile on this celebratory weekend as they mark the 40th anniversary of Saskatchewan's first ever great cup championship. Spoiled here today by the former Saskatchewan quarterback, Henry Burris, returning for the second time to Mosaic Stadium at Taylor Field. And a 17-point lead here with a minute 30 to go. The last time a team scored 50 points in the Rough Riders, it was five years ago when Toronto did it, July 28th of 2001. And not giving up with a minute 30 to go and down 17. Kanji set to make the short kick to the far sideline. The ball is high and it sails out of bounds. And it's shy of 10 yards, so a flag is thrown. Well, Calgary will take over. It's interesting you made that point about the 50 points because the last home game they gave up in their home opener, they gave up 45 points to BC, which, for all you bathroom trivia readers... Bathroom? It, well, if you're sitting in the bathroom reading the books... I hear you. The most points ever given up since 1910 by the Saskatchewan Rock Bears. Oh, that's going way that's back well, into the alley. Well, listen, well, let me tell you something. When I research, I research. You are thorough, my friend. Either that or I spent a lot of time in the bathroom. And you didn't even write that on an app. <laughs> yeah. That's a sight I don't want to picture. <laughs> hey, we're roommates on the road, for God's sake. Come on, buddy. Oh. McManus with his third offensive series here, mopping up for Henry Burris. Handing off, up the gut. And Joffrey Reynolds getting the call and what a start to this football season. I was talking to Joffrey Reynolds yesterday and he was crediting Matt Dunnigan for giving him a chance to resurrect his career coming in the second half of the season two years ago after the departure of the offensive coordinator John Jenkins. He burst onto the scene into you know, the Canadian Football League with his thundering running style. His breakout game was in October when he rushed for 189 yards against the Toronto Argonauts. It's a big gain across the middle to Jermaine Copeland as this Saskatchewan defense wilts. Well, they might be wilting, but also the Calgary offense is showing some of that killer instinct and applying the pressure by going down and trying to put some more points on the board. Reynolds was saying he really never got a chance to show his ability in the NFL. His four games with St. Louis in 2003 and then a month with the Giants in 2004 and cut before the season. Handoff. 
bouncing around up the middle. It's West Cates getting the call. Inside the red zone again with 40 seconds to go. And just to finish up our thought on Joffrey Reynolds, last week very uncharacteristically fumbles the ball against Hamilton, led to a touchdown. All week he's being seen carrying a football around with him, even in his civvies. Working on that, almost reminiscent of the old university days where the coach made you carry that football. Yeah. So you got used to it. And he protected it well today. Second and seven. They'll stay on the ground and Hunt and Perry slam the door shut up the middle on this Saskatchewan defense. Nowhere to go for Cates. With 17 seconds to go in the football game. And you have to wonder what the mood will be like in this city after being beaten so badly on this big reunion weekend. And then the investigation into Kenton Keith, and that's going to raise its head in the days to come as well. Well, remember, they also have the situation of the Travis Smith trial, which is coming up in the fall. So they've had their share of bad news. Three. McManus will graciously let the clock tick to zero and take a knee. And that's it. The gun sounds to end this football game. A 53-36 Stampeder victory. A one-sided win for Henry Burris in his second return here to Regina. Tom Higgins accepting congratulations. The Calgary Stampeders move into first place in the West at 3-1 ahead of BC and Edmonton. And the Rough Riders drop to fourth at 1-2. Here's Steve now with Henry Burris. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, Henry, how big was that opening bomb in the first quarter to another former rider, Elijah Thurman. Oh, I'd say it was big because, uh, you know, he was looking forward to this game and and uh, just to get an opportunity to come out there and we caught the corner sitting on the out route and Thurman did a great job just converting it to the goal route. There was nobody back there and the line did a great job today, gave me time and uh, he delivered. Tell me about the third quarter when the most effective play for the Stampeders offense was your number, your play. <laughs> well, the thing is uh, with Joffrey back there, it makes it easy for me to, to get those running yards especially when we're reading there. And uh, the defensive end, wherever it was, the end guy on the line kept knifing in, trying to take Joffrey's running away, so therefore gave me the edge. So there was no contain in, in that situation. I got to take it and go, uh, which makes it tough on the defense. This was the first meeting between you and the Riders in the next five weeks. Uh, would you agree you issued a pretty big statement? Well, uh, it was big for us because uh, we want to continue getting better each and every week, and uh, we, we uh, capitalized and we got in the scoring zone, and, and that was big. Uh, offensive line did a great job against a great defensive front. So each week we want to continue getting better, and definitely it's a big statement gives us three wins and two back-to-back -back wins something we didn't achieve last year until the second half so you know we're definitely making the move at the right time henry thanks for this good job hey thanks hi to my wife nicole my son armand i love you guys see you in a little bit guys thanks steve smiling hank henry burris three and oh now against his former team the saskatchewan rough riders as both teams meet at center field for a, a prayer but this day it was reynolds and burris owning the football and the turf as Calgary prevails by a score of 53-36 on the reunion weekend in Saskatchewan. <laughs> One offensive hero a moment ago, and now he's got a special team star for Calgary. Steve? Elliot, for some reason, uh, Sandro DeAngelis uh, has had great success against the Riders here at Mosaic Stadium. It's a heck of a place to play. It's the, it's the house that uh, Dave Ridgeway built, so I feel like it's a, it's a good kicker spot, but it's a lot of fun playing here. You know, the, the, the fans are so passionate here. You really get psyched up to play these guys, and, um, you know, I think adding the wind also really makes you focus up a little more, but just a, a tough place to play, yet fun place to play at the same time. A lot of players have problems with the field and, and the wind here. How have you made the adjustment? Why does it not bother you? You know, uh, if you don't mind, it don't matter. So don't even think about it. If, if, if you uh, if you stay true to your form and you hit the ball cleanly, it'll go in. You know, obviously, coach knows it's not going to go as far, so he's not going to have you kicking 50 yarders into the wind. But if you, if you if you don't mind, it shouldn't matter. So that's that's the that's the mindset I try to take. Is that uh you know I know I've put in the work. Just uh, just do what you normally do, and it'll cut through that wind. With a name like D'Angelo, so I'm not going to ask you who's going to win tomorrow. I'm going to ask you how many goals is Italy going to win by? Italy's going to win two nothing, and uh, I will be a ranting, raving lunatic tomorrow if they win. Um, you know. The, the Italians were pretty passionate people, and uh, I know my dad and everybody else back home in Niagara Falls is going to be glued to the television set. I wish I could be there, but uh, I'm going to represent in Calgary. Thanks very much for this, no Sandra. Problem. Appreciate no, it. No problem. Six field goals for Sandra here tonight against the Riders. Ellie? 
Thank you very much, Steve. And if the Italians get tomorrow on the pitch kick as well as DeAngelo's did today on the field, it might be more than 2 nothing. Our warrior of the game today, Henry Burris. Terrific. 13 of 23, 263 yards, three touchdowns, and no interceptions. The Saskatchewan fans still here are trying to cheer up their fans by telling them that Burris is no good. That's false advertising today. Burris was absolutely spectacular against the wind in the first quarter, with the wind in the third quarter, when Calgary really put this game away. But as we bring back and re-welcome our panel, Eric, Sean, and Greg. Sean, I thought Burris made the key point in the interview with Steve, and that was the adjustment they made to allow him to run the ball in the third quarter. Well, we touched on this earlier in the game, is that the importance of Joffrey Reynolds. Joffrey's running inside really pulled the Saskatchewan defense in and therefore allowed Henry to option off and go on the outside with the ball. So often, even though they looked inside, they thought Joffrey had it, Henry runs with the ball, and then they hand it back to Joffrey again, and now all of a sudden, Henry's running naked. That's why he was able to get down and score that critical touchdown and got Calgary going just when they needed it. Hey, Sean, a great adjustment by Steve Verrato. They went in at halftime. They saw that the ends and the linebackers were crashing down on Joffrey Reynolds. There was no contain, just like uh, uh, Burr said in his interview. He's got to be able to take those yards, and it took them until two minutes late into the third quarter to be able to adjust to it. Saskatchewan ended out and it'd be a touchdown, and so it, it's a great halftime adjustment by Steve Barato. Officially, Reynolds, 13 carries, 103 yards, a 29-yard touchdown, but Eric, you like not only the kicker, but the rest of Calgary's special teams. Well, oh, Calgary's just a complete football team. You know, uh, we saw it offensively. We talked about Barato, the adjustments he made, Denny Crean defensively, but a great job by Craig Dickinson for the Calgary Stampeders. Not only does DeAngelis go six of six, but we see, we see the fake punt at a critical situation in the first half. When Saskatchewan gets a little momentum in the second half, they run reverse off kickoffs. You gotta love the Calgary Stampeders. From ownership to general managers, to coaches, to players, they are very well positioned. And Eric, you touched on special teams. A guy who I want, really would like to make a point of is Wes Cates for Calgary. He made great tackles, hustle. This is what a young player is all about. You come onto a team, you have to stake a position. You go down there, bust your butt, make plays, and that's how you become a name in the league. Well, guys, last week, Danny Machocho was in a situation where he got embarrassed in Winnipeg, and he had to recover against BC. Now Danny Barrett's in the same possession, in position. He gets embarrassed at home, and Greg, how does he set up now for BC next week? Well, I thought Saskatchewan's offense was improved. What was really disappointing was their defense. They did not come in in the second half and really assert themselves. Very similar to what happened with Edmonton is that they need to be able to come together as a defense be challenged and come out strong against BC. That's where I'm going to be focusing. Eric? At some point, it's a player's game. These guys will both tell you that. Coaches can do what they do, but I think Dave, if you're Danny, you challenge the players to take ownership. It's about pride. It's about showing up. I mean, you know, uh, give Calgary full marks for today, but when you score 36 points offensively, you should win. To get beat and dominate the way they did defensively, I think it's a gut check time for the football players. Well, Saskatchewan, Eric, needs to do the same thing that Danny Machocha's Edmonton Eskimos did, which is to believe in yourself. Have confidence that we are a good football team. We made some mistakes. Go back to the drawing board, watch film, clean up your errors, and come back to BC with confidence and play hard. You know, the 